what a beautiful night it is on campus here at Grand Canyon University as students and fans alike getting ready for tonight's game. And we're going old school this throwback Thursday as the Lopes will suit up in those black uniforms. Going up for the second time this year against a whack opponent as the Ruse of Kansas City come to town. All right, Kate Longworth, welcome you in here to the Lopes pregame show coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra. It's been a while. The Lopes have been on the road, but we're happy to have you back here with us at GCU Arena. The band getting fired up behind us. And there's a lot to celebrate as the Lopes take the court tonight in those vintage black uniforms. You'll remember they wore those back in November for what it's worth. They took the W over Montana State, and I hope that good luck rubs off on them tonight because they continue to climb the standings. The Lopes now winners of five of their last seven games. You'll see here they are tied with Seattle University, really in that hunt for that number two seed when the WAC tournament rolls around next month. And for what it's worth, Seattle University in action tonight 7 p.m. tip off against New Mexico State yes they are still 10 and 0 but this is getting exciting because as you know Grand Canyon coming off that big victory at Cal Baptist it was a commanding W and uh, tonight they're going out there trying to show the ruse what they're made of and so now we bring in the rest of our broadcast team birthday boy Barry Patel alongside Scott Williams guys uh, set the table for tonight yeah, thank you very much, Kay. Yeah, we're looking forward to this. The uh, Lopes coming back. That was a crazy one in Riverside, California. 103 points, the highest output point total in D1 era history here for, for GCU. They lit it up. It was a lot of fun to, to watch. I'll tell you what, these guys absolutely went there and laid their hearts on it. The crowd was electric, sold out crowd, 5,050 people all wearing beat GCU t-shirts and the Lopes went out there and just banded together like a band of brothers, passed the basketball, attacked inside, like he said, shot 62% from the field, shot a great percentage from three, mixed up the inside attack and the outside attack and really got after it, locked down defensively down the stretch. One guy that led the way, how about Carlos Johnson, six for six from the field, 25 points, six boards. CJ has been a man possessed. I think Coach Mar he talked to him and said, you're just too big, too strong for most of these Western Athletic Conference players. Do your damage inside early. It will open up your outside game, and he has taken that to heart. He got to the line 11 times by being aggressive and going to the hole. Six for six from the field, four for four, the three-point field goals, six boards, the WAC Player of the Week this previous week for Carlos Johnson. How about Alessandro Labor got into foul trouble? which uh, he has been prone to do as the uh, opposing teams attack him. Who came off the bench but Lorenzo Jenkins, and he lit it up. Low Jenkins. Might have to start calling this guy in the microwave. He was absolutely fantastic. The way he's aggressive out there on the basketball floor. He has good footwork down in the low block. He's a very confident player, can stroke it from the outside, and he's left-handed, which just confuses a lot of people underneath. They don't know how to guard him. I really like the way he's added a nice bump off of Dan Marley's bench. 20 points on the game for Lorenzo Jenkins coming off the bench and a guy that has been a little bit sporadic, looking for some consistency, but Mikey Dixon definitely responded against California Valley. Well, he had some rust on his game after a long time off, uh, coming transferring over, but he has really started to find his groove. Another guy that's learning how to mix up the inside and the outside game, attacking the basket, getting himself to the foul line. He got seven free throws in this game by being ultra aggressive, he can shoot the three, three for five from behind the arc. 24 points for Mikey Dixon. Great to see all three of those guys light it up. Alessandro Labor out for a number of minutes because of those two early fouls in the game. He finished with three. Now, Kansas City comes in. They've lost their last couple. They lost to the Lopes earlier back last month by a score of 69 to 66. And you just caught up with Brandon McKissick, their leading scorer, had been out the last couple of games. Yeah, the concussion. BMAC is back and ready to roll. This guy's been absolutely fantastic. 6'3", 195-pound guard from Ferguson. Very crafty out there offensively. Uh, good defender. In fact, leads the conference in steals. So you got to watch him. He's a thief in shorts. <laughs> 
71 assists leading the Ruse, also had 16 points, all coming in the second half, leading the, the Ruse in scoring in that loss last month to GCU. That sets things up down here courtside. We'll send it back upstairs to you, Kate. Well, guys, hold on one quick second. Referencing that first meeting between GCU and KC, now they're going up against each other again tonight, and this is going to be a trend we're going to see to finish out February and to start March. The Lopes going up against their WAC opponents for a second time. So what can we expect now in these second meetings? Well, Kate, co coaching adjustments for sure. But on the minds of these players, they're going to remember. They're coming in here looking for some payback. Lopes went up to Kansas City and stole one, salted it away with by six Mikey Dixon free throws down the stretch. The Roos think they let one get away. They're coming back for some payback. Lopes got to meet that energy early. And they've got a feast off of the Havocs here. The seven games remaining, five of them here on their home court. The Lopes can separate themselves and get closer to that second overall seed in the Western Athletic Conference. All right, great points. Thank you, guys. And I was thinking it's been a while since we've seen each other, but that is because the Lopes have been on the road and like you mentioned, Barry, it's exciting times right now for Lopes fans because they are back here at GCU Arena for a lot of games to end out this season. Go get ready for game, guys. We'll see you Thank soon. You. All right, and still to come here on the Lopes pregame show, we are going to check in with Lopes insider Paul Coro. He will take us inside the locker room here with the Lopes and just fill us in on everything going on with the players. Plus, we'll check in on women's basketball. They're in action right now in Kansas City. Can they get the W? Well, we'll find out all of that and much, much more when the Lopes pregame show comes back right after this. We're picking the Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. You asked for it, and it's back. We got three chicken strips, two slices of Monterey Jack cheese, Whataburger's own buffalo sauce, a little bit of buttermilk ranch. The combination is just right. It's crunchy, and then it's spicy, and then it's cool. Your mouth is exploding with flavor. It just all works together, and then you add the cheese in there. It kind of wakes me up, honestly. My goodness. I can see myself eating this every time I come here. The Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. It's back, and it's only for a limited time. Order all your favorites from your phone. Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. All right, welcome back to the Lopes pregame show coming at you live here from GCU Arena and we're getting ready counting you down to tip off tonight and uh, it is the second meeting between the Ruse and GCU going up against each other this time with the Havocs in the house. Kate Longworth welcoming you back in now and I'm joined by a special guest Ramon Martinez, Public Relations Director for Talking Stick Resort and Casino. Thank you so much for being out here with GCU tonight. Oh, glad to be here. Yeah, what is it like to be out here at the game and kind of partnering with the university? This is my first time here. I'm excited because it's Native American Recognition Night, and to partner with you folks is the greatest thing in the world right now. Yeah, just wait, because you are uh, going to be treated to quite an experience here at the game. But what does it mean for you guys to have this partnership with GCU? Well, we have actually 59 of our, our 49 of our tribal members are attending here. And uh, we recognize the uh, education of our of our of our young people is uh, such an important thing. In fact, with the with the Talking Stick Resort, we have a program where they can come to work and still uh, seek uh, go for their degrees. So we support education 100. percent What has the presence of GCU and its growth done for the community and also for your personal community? Oh, it's it's been there for us. Uh, you know, number one. Uh, it's been there for us, and it's one of the choices of our community members. It's a great college. And then kind of hand in hand, how can the community go out and support everything that Talking Stick is doing? Well, just come out. I mean, we are an entertainment center, and we, we're a hub out there in the East Valley right off the 101. They're building businesses all around us, and we're seeing growth. We're providing jobs. We have over 3,000 employees. Wow. And in fact, we're getting ready to celebrate our 10-year anniversary. 
So promotions, giveaways, uh, concerts uh, are coming up for this year, 10 year anniversary. What does it mean to you to be a part of the Arizona community? You've been so embraced and then also, like you said, you bring so much, so much revenue here. You also are providing so much for the workforce uh -huh. and then giving back to the community. They're able to come here with this partnership and education. Right. How has everything been going and growing with Chopstick? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's part of our Native American culture. Uh, we, we have always wanted to be able to be a part and to be give back. With the casino and the resort, it's provided so many jobs and so many benefits for our community that we also recognize that we want to give back to the community overall. And you're also going into your busy season with uh, spring training, obviously yes. so many facilities, yes. Diamondbacks yes. facility out there. What do the next couple of weeks look like for you guys in the entertainment? In the next couple of weeks? Yeah. Well, as I said, coming up to our 10-year anniversary, also the pool parties will be starting soon. We'll be bringing in entertainment like uh, uh, Pitbull, Pitbull's coming. Wow. Yeah. yeah, just as one example. So it's exciting. Yeah, well, welcome out here to GCU. Enjoy the game, and I think you'll see that a lot of the principles and things you're going for you'll find here in the arena as well all right. all right well thank you so much Ramon for being here with us and when we come back more on the Lopes pregame show coming your way we're going to check in with head coach Dan Marley they've been on the road I'm sure he has plenty to say and we're going to bring bringing it all to you right here on Fox 10 Extra right after this very quick break Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP. Delivering water and power. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. The Havocs are in the house. That means GCU Arena is the place to be. The party tonight as the Ruse face off for the second time against Grand Canyon University, wanting a little revenge. But if the Lopes have their way, that will not happen tonight. The Lopes in their vintage black uniforms. And we're bringing you all the action here on Fox 10 Extra. Kate Longworth now joined by Lopes insider Paul Coro. And Paul, it's been a while since I've seen you. You've been on the road, however, with the team. So just kind of checking in, getting the pulse. What's been going on with the Lopes as of late? Well, Saturday. It was incredible, and it kind of built on some good things that maybe weren't consistent, but all of a sudden it culminated Saturday where they, they really shared the ball. They Everybody uh, got hot shooting. When they move the ball and move away from the ball, they shoot so much better and really started to show over the last three games, even though there was a loss in there, that their three-point shooting is up. And then now we, you look at the totality of the last seven games, and they've won five of the last right. seven and put themselves in a good position in the WAC tournament race. Well, especially, too, the schedule now goes in their favor, too, to have so many games at home to close out the season. Yeah, and they certainly have to play better here. They haven't been the normal home team that they've been in past years, but they're starting to make up with that by stealing some road wins and playing so well. They, you know, on this trip with these Kansas City and Chicago teams, they won both those there, and now they get them at home. They go to California Baptist, sold out arena, and have the best offensive performance in seven years. And even with Alessandro Labor getting an early foul trouble, they overcame that because guys like Lorenzo Jenkins stepped right. up in such a big way. Yeah, with Jenkins and Carlos Johnson, obviously took home player of the week awards for the WAC. And then Mikey Dixon, three of those guys coming up with 20 or more points in the game. Pretty exciting to see that balance scoring. But first, let's zero in on Mikey Dixon because he really has been the talk this second half of the season. Everyone was waiting to see him suit up in the Lopes uniform. And it seems like each and every game he's going out there doing a little bit more. Yeah, it's such a good indication when you see Mikey Dixon make three-pointers early in a game. A lot of times we've seen him get hot late in games, and it's really nice to have that for 40 minutes instead of a, 
a bunch in the last five minutes, and in Cal Baptist, he did that. He got going early, and that just stretches out defense. It makes things easier for drivers, makes it easier to get labor and post up. Last game, it was Lorenzo Jenkins right. in the post up, which is a whole new element, but that just added another score, because Jenkins, he's had his best basketball this season, and Javon Blackshear Jr. is the kind of guy who can find the hot hand, and that, guy, that game, it was Jenkins scoring from outside and inside, and it just gives him another score. I kind of going back to Blackshear, I mean, a freshman, and he's one of the three freshmen in the country in Division One basketball who consistently coming in with those 10 points per game and on the boards, and like you said, really uh, seeing his pass distribution out there. But I, I feel like when I watch him, they, the future is exciting for the Lopes. He's a freshman. But how impressed have you been, and what does he bring to this Lopes squad right now? Yeah, he embodies everything they want about maturity on the court, full effort. Nothing rattles him. I, I forget all the time that he's a freshman because exactly. we're so far past that with the way he handles himself on the court, the way he directs the offense. He's running into some issues lately with some foul trouble occasionally. And and, and you just have to remind yourself that, that there's going to be those freshman moments where he picks up a silly backcourt foul, but it's usually out of aggression because right. he loves to play defense. He wants to make plays. He wants to create things either for teammates or instigate something defensively that causes havoc. And speaking of the havoc, yeah. Laura, obviously back here, but I think uh, the main thing is that tonight the Lopes have the home court advantage. They go to go up to Kansas City last month. They stole the win there. Now these teams are meeting for a second time, and that's going to be the trend we're going to see, obviously, to finish out this season. As the Lopes go up against uh, the opponents for the second time around, I kind of propose this to Scott Berry as well, but what do you think will be seen in these second-time matchups between opponents? Yeah, it's a little trickier. You know, there, there'll be some player, Javon White, for Kansas City, didn't play in that game in Kansas City, and he's there, so that's another big man they have. It's a stark difference in elements. You know, that game, they had to go through those travel situations that delay the game of day, bad weather. Nobody was at the game because all the Kansas City fans were watching right. the AFC Championship. <laughs> now you got a 7,000 people here, and Kansas City's trying to get back into the WAC race. They're, they're a game and a half behind the Lopes train. While the Lopes are looking up and trying to get that number two seat, Kansas City's trying to blow them back down. So this is a key game to keep that momentum going from Saturday and have another winnable game Saturday at home against Chicago State. Right, and then, of course, they're going up uh, against KC today here, which means the women's basketball team is in Kansas City right now. This one's coming down to the wire, but if Nicole's team gets the W, they'll continue to build on that win streak. Right now, they have won five in a row. What's fueling the look success on the women's side? Yeah, give a lot of credit to Nicole Powell and her staff because this team is with, with freshmen and sophomores has a chance to move into first place in the WAC tonight. Deja Daniel, of course, a senior there. That's, she's a great player, a double-double machine, but they've seen the others grow up around her. They have depth, and they have the type of players that Nicole Powell wants, and they've been road warriors. That's where they got it going, and it's really incredible that a team that was picked to finish seventh by the WAC coaches has a chance to be in first place tonight. I know, absolutely amazing how they've been performing above and beyond expectations, and this just in, Six in a row, Nicole Powell's team pulls off the W at Kansas City tonight. So now they have sole possession of first place. So congratulations, we got a lot to watch on the women's side. And really, while we're talking athletics here at GCU, let's just jump over uh, to what'll be happening here tomorrow night at GCU Arena as men's volleyball goes up against number two BYU, coming off a great win uh, against USC. Yeah. What's going on with men's volleyball? There's gonna be two full houses on campus tomorrow. Yes. There's gonna be opening nights, gonna have a full house at GCU Ballpark and volleyball against number two BYU. The Cougars draw, have a huge traveling crowd, and GCU volleyball has one of the biggest uh, attendances in the nation for home crowds. So that's gonna be a packed house in here. They've been rolling, they're climbing. With another win, they'll be in the national top 25. Christian Jakey there has been one of the top outside hitters in the nation. And then there's always the heartwarming story of Camden Gianni coming back from cardiac arrest here a year ago to being a starting freshman and a key player on this team that's on a hot streak 
with uh, eight wins in a row. Yeah, and if uh, you don't have plans tomorrow, Valentine's Day, well, circle it on the calendar. You've got a date now because you can tune in right here at Fox 10 Extra because, as you mentioned, we'll be over at the ballpark here and uh, bringing you live coverage action against Oklahoma State as a men's baseball team welcomes in the new season. What are you anticipating for Andy Stakelitz's squad? You know, the, the Lopes are loaded with pitching. They have almost all, they, had, they do have their entire pitching staff. Cade Meckles, the ace, will be going tomorrow night against the number 22 team in the nation. Should be fantastic, but they're in a place now where they feel they can contend. They've already established themselves as the best WAC program over consistency year after year. They haven't won the WAC tournament yet, and that's the next step for them. They also feel like they can win those midweek games against Powers and, and start to break through against the Power Fives. Right, all right, well, a lot to look forward to. And here at GCU Arena, you just saw Matt Jackson, former Lope, in the house, and everyone's getting ready to go. Put on those headphones, it's gonna get loud. Thank you so much, Paul Coro, and we will be back after this with, as promised, Dan Marley giving us the game plan for the Lopes tonight as they go up against the Roos. We'll be right back. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. We're back, and so are the Lopes in the house tonight and also on Saturday night against Chicago State. And right now, the Lopes have a chance to fight for that number two seed in WAC play. They'll hit the road briefly for Seattle U and Utah Valley, and then back here again, New Mexico State. Circle that one. February 27th, and then you're rewarded with an extra day in February and a game from the Lopes. And now we go straight to the source. He's standing by with Barry Battelle to give us tonight's game plan. Thanks, Kate. I'm alongside the head coach of the GC Lopes, Dan Marley, as uh, your team comes back after, uh, wow, what a, what a game at, uh, at CBU. 103 points to 98, the uh, most points in the D1 era for GCU basketball. Your thoughts just overall, uh, it, was, it was impressive. Yeah, it was exciting. Uh, great atmosphere, a team that uh, really gets up to play against us. They were sold out, a whiteout. Um, Last time we were here, uh, played them here, we could not, couldn't score the ball, and it was just an offensive shootout. Uh, I've never been a part of anything where a team, the opposing team, makes 19 threes and we still win the game. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, they were uh, shooting it from all over the place. Um, I thought we did a great job offensively of not only moving the basketball, but moving people and taking uh, uh, good shots and just withstanding the pressure of them continuing to make long threes, hard threes, and we never really uh, got rattled. We continued to make plays down the stretch. Uh, Mikey was huge. Carlos goes six for six and scores 20 some points. Uh, so I thought it was overall, uh, you know, with Ali going out with three minutes uh, into the Bob first total, half, yep. Doobie steps in and scores 17 points in the first half. So uh, great, uh, great team win. I know you've talked about this, and when you look at the the box score, you look. I look at the assists, and you talk about spreading the ball around, and, and there are a number of assists in that game. Yeah, we need to do that. Uh, we tend to shoot better when we move the basketball, when we play one on one, or we take. Uh, uh, off the dribble threes were not as good. So we continue to get better at that. Um, our turnovers are down because we're playing off of two feet. We're not charging. We drive into the paint. Guys are relocating, we're, and we're very unselfish with the ball. And uh, we've, we've seemed to really grasp that now, which makes me happy. Carlos uh, Johnson in the game, 25 points, six for six from the field. He was the WAC player of the week because of that game. Yeah, he was good. You know, Carlos is a very talented guy. And we talk about sometimes he tries to force shots, and he was very, poor, uh, very patient in this game. Uh, only taking six field goals, making all six. I think he was four for four from the uh, three-point line. He went to the line 11 times, made uh, nine of them. So 
uh, he's a big part of that game. But as I said, we had a lot of guys really step up, especially uh, you know when our bench comes off like that and Doobie uh, steps yeah. up when Ali gets in foul trouble. So it was great. You mentioned Lorenzo Jenkins, 20 points in the game. He was uh, two of three from the arc. Three-point shooting was phenomenal as well. I mean, it, you talk about CBU hitting 19, but you guys were, were stellar from the arc. But he did come off the bench when he needed to because of Ali being in foul trouble. He did, and he, he made some shots, but he did a good job of mixing it in. He just wasn't... Uh, uh, living at the three-point line. Uh, he's really good when he does that, when he goes downhill and uses his size. Uh, he's a good athlete, so it's a good mixture of, of spreading the ball from shooting it from three and also getting into the paint. And then Mikey Dixon, he's been a little bit streaky, but he had 24 points in the game. He was eight for 10 from the field. Yeah, it was big. Uh, he can really shoot the ball, and I think I said when he's a lot better is when we just move it uh, and he can shoot it good. And he's really good with the ball. He can shake and bake and get, th get things done here, but uh, our guys did a good job of getting him open. He made some clutch baskets down the stretch. Big, big win, momentum coming back. Now you got five of the remaining seven games here on the home court at GC Arena. The next two, of course, here against Kansas City tonight and then Chicago State on Saturday. Kansas City comes in. You uh, were able to hold on there. 69-66 victory at KC in January as a uh, stellar from the line down at the uh, near the end of the game. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a good match. They're a good team. They play extremely hard. Uh, it'll be a good matchup again tonight. I thought again we did a good job of, of moving the basketball. Uh, Ollie had an off game for him, but we had guys step up, uh, made clutch shots. Uh, Mikey down the stretch made uh, six straight free throws to kind of ice the deal. So again, this was a team that was making a run on us, and we made some big plays going down the stretch uh, to hold them off, and it was a, a really good road victory for us. They're one of the leaders in steals in the nation. What do you? Uh, what's the scouting report against the Roos here tonight? Well, I mean, they they get inside and they really clog up the paint. So uh, I believe. You know, we're really good at not turning the ball over. And I said a lot of our turnovers come through charges. So the way that we've been playing lately, uh, when we drive and kick and you feel that pressure with guys sinking in, you have to plant with two feet and five find guys on the perimeter. So uh, we should be able to take care of the basketball. we got to be strong with it. We had a hard time down there with the, their physicality, especially Ali. Uh, he had a hard time catching the ball and, and hanging on to it. So we got to really catch the ball, rebound the ball with two hands and be strong. I know this has been an off, off season with the uh, home court advantage, but as I mentioned earlier, five of the remaining seven on home court. Yeah, I mean, it's been tough, but we uh, we always love playing here, and our guys have to have the mindset that every game is, is a must-win situation for us. We're right there tied for second uh, with Seattle. You know, you know, we're, we're behind Baptist, but they're not going to the tournament. I still think we can catch them, uh, but we are right there with, with Seattle at 5-4. and four. We started 0-2 in the conference, and we've since then we've been 5-2, and two, and I think we're playing a lot better. So I give uh, our guys a lot of, con a lot of uh, uh, props for, for really staying with it and playing hard every night. All right, thanks, Coach. Got it, thanks. Good luck tonight against the Roos. We'll send it back upstairs to you, Kate. All right, thank you, Barry. As you heard, Coach Marley hoping his team can uh, keep lighting it up like they did against Cal Baptist tonight, carrying it on against Kansas City. The light show's happening at GCU Arena, and when we come back, we'll keep the party going here on the Lopes Pregame Show. Sanderson Ford. Straight up offers like these. Now through President's Day, escape to a D-Banks game and a new escape for only $18.9. Lease one for only $2.59 a month. Save ten dollars on all 2019 F-150 Super Cruise. Get two Arizona Diamondback tickets just for coming in. Plus, they support local sports. And donate generously to local charities. If it's important to you to do business with someone who supports our community, choose Sanderson Ford. Straight up. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Because if you're not here at the Purple Pregame Party, I hope you're tuning in all night here to Fox 10 Extra as we bring you live coverage of tonight's game against the Roos. And uh, it should be a big game as they meet for the second time this year. We'll be with you all night tonight. Plus, you get us tomorrow here on Fox 10 Extra starting at 5.30 p.m. with the Lopes Pregame Show leading up to the baseball home opener here on campus against Oklahoma State. They're a powerhouse. It should be a great game. But right now, it's all about Division I men's basketball coming your way. Dan Marley and the guys. Scott and Barry will be with you right after this with the call.
looking at my kids like I'm bossy. But the bang, 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 bang. So why little S to the base of Flandern and mid on edges? Is it? Rock a show, stop a beat, get it crunk and wired. Wave your hands, scream loud. Everybody here, get it out of control. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes play host to the Kansas City Rouge. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. I'm Barry Vitel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, the Lopes return for a two-game home set beginning tonight against Kansas City, coming back from last Saturday's huge win at California Baptist. They compiled 103 points. Wow. They were absolutely spectacular. Shot 62% from the field, about that from the three-point line, lit up the scoreboard for the most points in D1 history, and I am absolutely falling in love on this Valentine's Day weekend with Carlos Johnson, the way he's balling. Yeah, player of the week honors in the conference are Carlos Johnson. What a big game, 25 points. Yeah, he was absolutely fantastic at mixing up the inside game in the outside game. He's just too big, too strong for all the players in the Western Athletic Conference. So when he puts his head down, they just can't stop him. In fact, they have to foul him all the time. He went to the line, shot 11 freebies. One guy we'll be looking at is 6'3", junior guard, Brandon McKissick. Uh, this McKissick, this guy is absolutely a thief in shorts, runs around all over the floor, causing havoc. He's averaging 10 points a game. He leads the team at assists. McKissick coming back after missing the last two games with concussion protocol, scored 16 points, led the ruse in scoring against the Lopes in their previous meeting, all of those points coming in the second half. It's time to tip things off from GC Arena in Phoenix. Let's send it down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. gentlemen and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU arena for tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Ruse of the University of Missouri Kansas City and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes tonight's game is sponsored by Talking Stick Resorts this evening we are proud to host Native American Heritage Night we have more than 250 guests from tribes across the state and are excited to have them join Lopes basketball. Here to present the game ball to Coach Marley, please welcome tonight's honorary captains, Brian Garza and Ramon Martinez, both board members of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. Thank you, Brian and Ramon, and welcome to all of our guests. We hope you enjoy tonight's game. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Jonah Starr, a senior majoring in psychology. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, let us be still tonight in your presence. Lord, I thank you for this awesome game of basketball. Please help us to use this platform to glorify you. I pray for every single player, coach, and official. Please help us to, them to play in your honor and glory, Lord. Please keep them safe 
and have him sa have safe travels home. In your son's name, amen. Thank you, Jonah. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with a presentation of the national anthem. Tonight, the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by the West Point High School Choir under the direction of Abigail Eckert. The colors for tonight's game will be presented by the Army ROTC Cadet Color Guard Team from Salt River Pima High School. Thank you, West Point High School Choir. The Kansas City Roos come in 12 and 13 overall, three and seven away from KC, four and six in the whack. Their head coach in his first season is Billy Donlan. Here is Billy Donlan's starting five, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Zion Williams, Brandon McKissick, Jordan Giles, Frank Camgain, and Josiah Alec. First, I thought you were going to say Zion Williamson. I got a little nervous there. But we're going to take a look at uh, Jordan Giles, a 6'7", 225-pound senior forward. He's averaging 14.2 points per game over his last 12. These kids have absolutely been on fantastic. Against his last game against New Mexico State, he went for 20 points on 9 of 15 shooting. He's a volume shooter. Look for him to spot up behind that arc. Ooh. Coach Dylan, a former assistant coach, most recently at Northwestern and Michigan. He also was head coach at Wright State. The assistant coaches Rodney Perry, Steve Payne, and Lucas McKay. First of two on the home court. KC tonight, Chicago State Saturday night. Yeah, both winnable games for the Lopes. Got to make some hay. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Coach Dan Marley in his seventh season at the helm, 133 and 85. Here is Coach Marley's starting five, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Mikey Dixon, Javon Blackshear Jr., Carlos Johnson, Bryce Okpo, and Alessandro Labor. And we're going to keep our eye on the young freshman, Bryce Okpo. He did not have his A game out on the road. He had no point, just three rebounds and 20 minutes of action. I'm really looking forward to B.O. to bounce back tonight with a little home cooking under his belt the last couple of days and see him get back to using those pogo stick-like legs around the basket for offensive putbacks. 
The Wolves 5 and 4 in the Western Athletic Conference, 10 and 13 overall. The associate head coach Marvin Menzies, the assistant coaches Chris Cremelone and Isaac Chu, director of basketball operations Dylan Hidalgo, special assistant to the head coaches Johnny Hill, video coordinator Matt Lopez, director of sports medicine Jordy Hackett, and the director of sports performance is Gabe Borland. Time now for Sanderson Ford. Keys to the game. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Well, you know, it's throwback night here at the arena, but since it's Valentine's Day oh, tomorrow, I had to go. Yeah, I had to go with Billboard Magazine's top 10 romantic songs. So coming in at number 10, I can't stop loving you. Oh. Well, the Lopes better stop the rules quick. They got to get back in transition, paint, build out quickly and under control to those three point bumps. And number four, how deep is your love? Well, how deep can the Lopes attack inside on offense? Lopes shot a season best 62.7% on Saturday by attacking the basket. Look for him to do much of the same here tonight. And then number two, by boys to men, I'll make love to you like you want me to. Oh, <laughs> you know the words, Barry. Oh, yeah, of course I do. You got that on your mixtape still, don't yeah, you? Yeah, boys to men, strong. It is time for these young freshmen now to step up show that they have become men, man up, learn what they have from the first time through this conference season as they face these opponents for the second time. Looking squarely at Javon Blacks here at Bryce yeah. Oakville. Boys to men had all the CDs, had them on the i5 shuffle. Oh, yeah. Talk about throwback. That's right. The officials Winston Stead, Doran Gottschall, and Eric Anderson. Lopes fans will remain on their feet until the home team hits their opening bucket. We are underway. Okpo back to Blackshear. I like those black beauties. They look tough in those. Like Raider Black. Dixon looks into Labor. Labor trying to muscle his way to the point. Oh, early whistle. A yeah, little, little too much chest down there underneath. Labor was bringing the attack, and we got a little too physical. The referees want to try to clean it up early. The Kissick back, as you found out, three games. Concussion protocol will miss the last couple of games for the Ruse. Yeah, that was all shocking. Huh? We didn't even hear anything about an injury. And the word came down that he got, his, got that concussion. Johnson stops, pops from three, short, hits the front of the rim, rebound. Ruse, bring it up, Cam Gaines. That defense is really solid for Kansas City. Lopes got to try to move that basketball from side to side. And the Ruse hit early. Yeah, that won't make Coach Marley happy because a guy from right in the middle of the floor just dribbled right down the heart of his defense and laid the ball in the bucket without any help sighted assistance. Johnson. Dixon. In the corner, near side, last year, right there, into the paint, slicing his way in, and fans can take a seat, a hoop and a harm. Oh, Javon Blackshear, you got to just love the moxie on this young freshman. One of the lightest guys on the floor. Just takes it right to the heart of the defense. Gets clobbered by a couple white jerseys and still finds a way to muscle the ball up to the basket. I think they got him hitting weight room this year. Not sure. They better. That they, would be dangerous. It would be, it would be nice to see him in the offseason add 10, yeah. 15 pounds of muscle oh, to that frame goodness. and still Could keep you his speed. Terror. Off the mark. Tied it too early on here in Phoenix. Kissick near side, steps back, hands it over to Alec. Alec far side, over to Cam Gain. Back up top. Good ball moving there. Alec looking right. Zion Williams. Far side. Giles inside the Cam Gain for Alec. Turn, right hand, short. Labor gathers it in. Right, I like that defense by Labor. It, he played solid defense, but didn't, didn't want to make sure he did not pick up a foul. Blackshear quickly to Labor underneath. Off the glass and in. Oh, I don't know how he caught that ball. What a fantastic pass by Blackshear. But you're right, he had to put some heat on it. And somehow Labor was able to control and put in the bucket. The Kissick moves right. Looked inside. Oh, it almost got picked off. I don't know how it didn't. 
Williams off a couple black jerseys. Yep. Williams trying to bring it in. Step back, short. Labor tried to get a hand on it. He did. Okpo gathers it in. Yeah, King rebound that time. Blackshear. Running back up top. Goes left. Dixon beyond the arc. High by McKissick. Labor alone. All the way over to Blackshear. Puts up the three. Good! Oh, so nice that time. Ball moving from side to side. If you can swing the ball two, three times, the percentages of your field goal are going to go up tremendously. That time, Lopes got three swings and found a wide open man. Five for Blackshear. 7 0 run for GCU. McKissick, near side, trying to turn that corner. Stopped by Johnson. Now he cuts back over. Bounce pass down low. Williams can't get it, but it goes out of bounds. Blackshear. Look at this one, one more time. Just a nice skip pass. Rifles right across the top of the defense. And Blackshear with no hesitation jams it. Hey, I like him on defense, too. After he knocks down the three, he comes back the other way, digs down underneath, gets that deflection, and prevents an easy two. Oh, Whoa, someone got caught napping. Easy. Wake up. That's what they, that's one thing that the Lopes are so good at, those baseline out of bounds plays, get easy scores. Well, they got burned on something that they're normally so good at doing themselves. Okay, Ben White, the Ruse leading rebounder, checks into the game for Allen. Johnson. Loving on the shot clock. Inside the labor. They're the top of the key. Looking to step back. Oh, they got him on that little yep. windshield wiper move. It looked like he just lost his balance enough where he slid that pivot foot a couple inches, and the referees quick to blow the whistle. Coach Marley mic'd up over there? Yes, he is. Do you see a video? Team. That could be dangerous. McKissick. Cam game. Far side. Roll all the way over in the corner. Williams. Guarded heavily by Blackshear. Trying to get it to White. He finds it. He turns. Labor trying to back in on him. Pushing him back. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty good job defensively on Labor, and unfortunately, the weak side board was not covered. The tip hit goes down, and this is a one-point game now. Dixon. Blackshear off the wing. Labor alone. All the way back out. Dixon. Drive, stops, pops. Good! Nice little mid-range game there by Mikey Dixon. Didn't force it too deep, found a nice cushy spot where he can pull up for his jump shot and get a clean look at the basket. I tell you what, coming off those 24 points, he's looking good tonight. White, quickly. Zion's back out front. Zion Williams, White. Labor eyeing him. Back to White. Leaves it for Cam Gain. Cam Gain in the paint, loses the ball. Foul. Oh, I thought Mikey Dixon got in there and wrapped that one away, but apparently he got too much of the wrist. Time out on the floor. The Lopes up by three early on in Phoenix. Welcome to your hometown, Whataburger. Hello. Back here, you can add as much flavor as you like. Grilled peppers and onions. Bacon's perfect. Gotta have them grilled jalapenos. It completely changes the taste of the burger. Those add-ons just add a little extra touch. It sets the Whataburger apart. It takes it up kind of to the next level. Avocado goes well with everything. What doesn't it go with? <laughs> They're gonna make it just right every time I come. Those burgers make for me. They say you can't buy happiness, but the add-ons get real close. <laughs> We're adding big flavor here at your hometown Whataburger. <laughs> Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. GCU Men's Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth.
Well, with the throwback unis in play tonight, the Lopes going old school. They're also hoping to go some streaking because they took a big win Saturday night at Cal Baptist, 103 to 98. They broke a lot of records as well with that score. Five players scored in double figures. That was Johnson, Dixon, Jenkins, Blackshear, and Laver. Laver ran into a little foul trouble, but his teammate stepped up, and they had 16 assists, 26 bench points. Everyone contributing in that one. And now the Lopes sitting pretty when it comes to standings. Cal Baptist above them, but they are uh, in a fight for that number two seed of whack play, guys. No doubt about it. Five of the remaining seven here on their home court. This, of course, is a watch and win night where you can win free tickets just by watching the Lopes. Starting now, if you text win the whack to 602 639 8979 before halftime, include your name and what city you're watching the Lopes from, you'll be entered into watch and win. The winner will be randomly selected at halftime. White rebound put back and good for KC. Lopes got to do a better job to fit in that painted area. All eight. Of well, the Roots points have come in the paint. Wait, what, what, I'm, I'm watching this New Mexico State Seattle University game right now. New Mexico State got an early 10 2 lead. That's who the Lopes, Seattle's who the Lopes are trying to chase down in that second spot. No basket. Foul. I like the way Labor's putting the pressure on the defense. They are feeding the big man inside, trying to get him off early. White called. First person, 13 foul. In the ballgame for the Roos, number two, Rob Whitfield, four, Jashir Hartnett. There you see head coach Billy Donlin. He's done quite a job there, hadn't he? Yep. Hey, he's, trying to, he's trying to get this game. He wants to get his team to 500 tonight. 13 and 13. Dixon. Looking for an opening. Labor for three. Good! Well, I'll tell you what, that was a great little pick and pop offense right there. And where we're sitting up here, Barry, we could track that ball right to the basket. Yeah. It looked good as soon as it left his fingertips. Giles back out to White. Pirouettes back over. Hardnet in the game, down to White. Got a little push there by Lehrer. Now driving in is Giles underneath White. No doubt about it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're right about that push. That push, push yeah. must have made him really mad. <laughs> and uh, he came back with a vengeance. <laughs> Tried to take the rim home as a souvenir. 10 4 KC. Labor. Look to Dixon, guarded heavily. Dix, Labor on the floor. Blackshear back to Labor. Seven on the shot clock, driving baseline. Picked off there. That was sloppy all the way around. Hardnack brings it up. That was a bad pass right there. He kind of lost his balance. It disrupted the entire rhythm of the offense, that possession down. But that's one thing that these Roos will do is they will steal that ball. Looks got back in transition though. Inside to White. Hook pull. Labor comes over to support. Looks for baseline. No go there. Back out to Giles. Doesn't go. Labor pulls it down. Strong defense. Great double team that time down low. And they rebounded Paul this time without a second opportunity for MKC. Blackshear drives. Labor, oh, that was heavy traffic. Turnaround. Not going to happen. Brown and Jenkins at the scorer's table waiting to check in for the Lopes. Well, that's two good players that have didn't really score the basketball. You mentioned the 20 points Jenkins is coming off of, and of course we know what Isaiah Brown can do here at home. Ooh, in and out by Hardnett. Good strong rebound by Labor. Had a dude draped all over his back like a backpack, and still managed to come up with that ball. He's got four boards. White called for the foul. Second on White. He's going to check out. Brown and Jenkins check in. Dixon and Oak Poe take a seat. Two point Lopes lead. 12.32 to go, opening half. So glad you could join us here from Phoenix. Jenkins to Brown. Ruse also made some changes. Johnson. Fouled by McKissick. Bob Whitfield in the game for the Ruse, their leading three-point shooter. 
Also leads with 35 steals. Back out to Brown. Stops, pops, short, rebound. KC. Whitfield leaves it there. Kissick brings it up. Kissick right. Or offensive set there. I'm not quite sure the Lopes knew how to play that double high attack and got caught for grabbing. Oh man, deja vu. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. A guy in taking, taking the inbounder's got his back to the basket and oh God. they're just throwing the ball right by his ear hole. Nesbitt, Jenkins. Moves right. Hand off. Little sloppy. Not at a 12. Blackshear. Hello. Moves left. Step back. In and out. Loose ball pulled down by the Roos. Yeah, chance for the Roos to take the lead after two pretty good defensive efforts. They're coming back in the ball off the floor with a chance to. I said take the lead. They're going back to that same set again. All 12 of the Ruse points in the paint. Over three minute scoring drop for GCU. Whitfield beyond the arc. Giles leaves it for Nesbitt. Oh, oh careful. Oh, I threw him over there by my season tickets in the Ooh. second row. The fellows fans That's had some quick rea reactions. Ooh. We'll step aside, not at a 12, 11 3 to go here at GCU Arena. You have a foundation of strong values. You belong where your passions come to life. Grand Canyon University's online degree program in cybersecurity makes it convenient for you to join the newest front in keeping your community safe. GCU teaches you how to secure and protect a virtual environment. Join the growing field of cybersecurity. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Welcome back. We're at the under 12 mark here in the first half. And what do you know? Not at 12. The Roos and Lopes going at it for the second time. Lopes were winners at Kansas City last month. And tonight trying to keep it going again after a big win over Cal Baptist on Saturday. Now you'll remember Cal Baptist not eligible to keep their Division One status and making that transition for the WAC tournament, which means Grand Canyon University is battling it out with Seattle U for that number two spot in WAC tourney play next month. And interesting to note, the Red Hawks in action tonight at New Mexico State. And of course, Mexico State is riding that perfect 10 and 0 record. But things are looking good for Grand Canyon and they've got a, kind of in charge of their own fate, guys. They gotta go out there and win, but they've got a home court advantage. If they use that advantage with the Havocs in the house, playing in their favor to end out the season. And of course, right now, looking to pull out with a little bit of a lead over Kansas City to make it a great game tonight in those vintage uniforms. No doubt about it. It's a bit of a log jam behind New Mexico State. It's a watch and win night. You can win free tickets to the WAC tournament in Vegas starting right now. Text win the WAC to 602-639-8979 before halftime. Include your name and the city that you're watching the Lopes from, and you'll be entered to win. It's a watch and win contest. A winner will be oh, randomly selected and announced in the second half. I like that offensive play Coach Marley just drew up. He threw that ball back down into his big guy who has been absolutely a beast down on that low block and just racking up the fouls by UMKC. Now they are at six fouls. And GCU will shoot free throws with each foul for the rest of this half. There's still 10 minutes and 50 seconds to play. Oh, nice speed, Isaiah Brown. It doesn't go. How did he miss that? I don't know if that ball got deflected late or just squirted out of his hand, but he had a wide open layup at the 10. McKissick. Giles, long three. 
In and out, big rebound, Blackshear Jr. Devon. Wants it all by Beats himself. Him. Wow, he was like the road runner on that one right there, and everybody else was the coyote. He was just too fast. He was looking to score tonight, and he is attacking that basket. Seven points for the young freshman. Whitfield. Back up top, Giles. McKissick, near side, Hardnett. Three-pointer. That's in and out. They've had some rim rattlers. Labor leaves for Blackshear. Jenkins, eyes inside, all the way over to Brown. Wow, look at the ball movement, baby! Proof of harm! That's that side-to-side -side action that's so nice. I tell you what, great job on the, on the wing catching that ball. It was a little high and outside. Jenkins throws it over to Brown, but he catches it and fires a strike underneath the C.J. Carlos Johnson. And with some concentration on the contact, he makes the finish. And I just love that one by Blackshaw. He just says, y'all think I'm going to go to my left. But I'm going to do a little inside-out tricky dribble, <laughs> take it down the right side of this lane, and here's wide open. You could have rolled a red carpet out there like he was going to accept an Oscar. Giles. Did you watch the Oscars last Sunday, Barry? By a little, bit, a, movie guy. a little bit of it. Yeah, watch a little bit of that. I, I got to watch it. Apparently, I, I gotta gotta seen watch it. this movie. I tried apparently. to I tried to rent it the other day, and, and I had some issues and couldn't get it to pull up. But I want to check that out. Cleaned up the Oscars. That guy that kept swinging it up there. He he was so tired of getting up and going and accepting awards. He said all he wanted to do was go party. Yep. They kept they kept giving him more and more awards. You know how that feels. Oh. Giles has two fouls. He takes a seat. Cam Game looking to drive. Underhanded in. Good move by Cam Game. I can't understand for the life of me at the college level why you're not leaving that corner three point shooter to stop the layup. I'd rather take away a 100% chance at a three at a, a layup and then give him a 50% a chance at making a three point. That's just me. Whoops. Back up. Oh, driving down the baseline. Dixon, step back. How about it? Ooh, in and out. Loose ball picked up by the Ruse. Under nine to go. Trying to recover. You could, the wheels got a little loose. Hard net. Looking left. Alec leaves it back for hard net. Gulfport, Mississippi native. Kicks back out to Cam Game. Oh, great switch that time. Great switch back. I got Bryce Oakpo out there on the perimeter trying to guard, but it was a really nice job between the young freshman and Lorenzo Jenkins. They had a switch on the perimeter and then got caught on back on the outside. We were able to switch back without any damage being done. Back underway. Whitfield. Run of the rim, got a little help off the glass as well. I'll tell you what, the Roos came to play tonight. GCU thought they were going to get an easy win. They were sadly mistaken. Box here. Moves right around the corner. All the way in the corner for Dixon. Back out Brown. Hide by Hardnett. Blacks here, near side. Puts it on the floor. Back to Dixon. Seven on the shot clock. Whoops, got to move. Dixon. Spinning, moving, floater. Not there, rebound. Okpo's there, stripped away. Oh, uh, that's that wife, Bryce Okpo. I like living on that offensive glass, but he made that young freshman mistake of bringing the ball down low. They could strip it away from him. Pardon that. Cuts back up top, all the way over. Far side. High by blocks you. Now he comes near side. Whitfield, quick turnaround, in and out. Blackshear brings it up. Under seven and a half to go, opening half. One point, Lopes lead. Looking to turn the corner, drives baseline. Now he's covered, picked off by the Roos. Low percentage. Williams there, but a charge. Oh, how about that effort by Isaiah Brown? He's facing a two-on-one break. He got back to the basket, made the right decision, stopped the basketball, and picks up the charge.
17, 16, 7, 15 to go here in the opening half. Early on, the uh, one of the big highlights is Javon Blackshear Jr. with seven points in the game. Labor's got five and four rebounds in this one, but Javon Blackshear, he is uh, he's touched the ball quite a bit here in the opening half. And he has been aggressive. I love the moxie of this young freshman when he is in attack mode. He's been aggressive from the outside, shooting the basketball and driving that ball down the lane as well. Let's check out some highlights from Javon Blackshear Jr. here in the opening half, hitting from the arc and inside as well. I love this one right here because this one here just shows a lot of concentration and concentration and strength finishing after the contact and then fires a strike over to his big man knows he's got to get the bigs involved and a real tricky dribble gets him all the way to the basket no hesitation on the three got it all worked seven points two boards got that big assist from we saw for every three-point shot that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Gary Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth from GCU Arena in Phoenix. Throwback night. I'm doing the Havocs in the house. Busy. Weekend of athletics here at GCU. Tomorrow, the opener for baseball, Brazzle Field at GCU Ballpark. The Oklahoma State Cowboys in town. They'll be right here on Fox 10 Extra. And then uh, also tomorrow, men's volleyball right here in the arena against BYU. And then the uh, Lopes Foos squad back in action here Saturday against Chicago State. Hope to see you come on out to GCU campus. You haven't been out here. It looks a little different. Mm, looks a little looks different. Amazing. You haven't been out here in a little while, maybe uh, a year. It looks a lot different from a year ago, even. So. Hey, just throwbacks. I almost want to throwback songs. Some old school rap, you know, some uh, rapper's delight, LL Cool J, some of those Run DMC hits. But uh, I, I, I'm a lover, so I had to go with That's the true, Valentine's Day. Thing. Goes without I know saying. you got big plans tomorrow. <laughs> Brown with the ball. Under seven to go. Underneath Carlos Johnson off the glass. What a dish by Brown. I don't know how he saw, saw him. He must have an eye on the side of his head because Carlos Johnson was hiding down there on that baseline. And Brown fired strike and found wide open. Five for Johnson. Nesbitt. Play and catch. Looked inside, Allen. And left, stops off the glass. Well, look. I, I thought I had a travel on there. I thought they got the travel, but they're going to get labor with the foul down low. But look at that one, one more time. That was Isaiah Thomas, Magic Johnson esque right there. He just kind of freezes the defender and then slips it right over to his buddy. I thought CJ was going to do a back scratch yeah. and dunk on that one. That would have really got these crowds even more hyped than they already are. They haven't seen this team in a while. They came in with an electricity tonight. They did. Now that you're ready to roll. In Folks are bringing the energy as well. <laughs> Kansas City, they, they, they're not intimidated by this crowd. Like a lot of teams we see in the first half, they come in here to get shell-shocked by the noise level. Uh, the Roos are uh, ready to play. Coach Donlin's got his team comfortable with this atmosphere. In and out by Alec. Lead is two for GCU. Brown brings it up. Jenkins. Over to Waver, near side. Puts it on the floor. Oh, look out. Picked off. Zion Williams. Now that's Zion what they do. They get into passing lanes. They're a, a, a yep. little faster and a little longer than, they, than you think they are. That's already their third steal of this game. And just add more, two more points to those points in the paint total. Look at this another one. Oh, here we go again. Nevs. Hardnet, rather, puts it home. 28th nationally in total steals. Had 201 coming into this game. Yeah, and their first lead since they had the lead at two to two to nothing. So they keep battling. And like I said, this this team is this team is up for the challenge. They take the lead. 21-19. Brown bounce pass. Labor only oh, fouled by Alec. They are really looking for their big man down low tonight. All the big men, like their high-low interior passing has been tremendous. They just got to figure out that defensive end. Coach Marley says the same thing. He's like, hey, we got to be able to take care of the basketball and keep them out of our paint. 
shaking his head over there, talking to his coaches, trying to find some answers. <laughs> Yeah, one thing they have done a nice job, they haven't fouled anybody. Of course, maybe they're giving up all these layups because they're not getting close enough to two foul anybody. But they only got 14 fouls. It's five and a half, under five and a half minutes to play. The other side of that, Lopes are in the double bonus. Every time they get fouled, they're shooting two free throws the rest of the half now. 77% free throw shooter coming in. Alessandro Labor hits both. 54 of 79. Seven points for Alessandro, four boards. Let's get that time in the game where the folks can put together a little something, a couple stops, make a couple baskets, take the momentum to the locker room in the half. But no, again, just able to like pound it down wow. low. Just Alec muscling that 6'7", yeah, 220 frame. Crushing the soft underbelly of the Lopes tonight. 20 of their 23 points in the paint. Step back, Dixon. Oh, not there. Rebound, Ruse. They're up by two. Slowing it down. And yeah, they don't really, I thought they were going to attack a little bit more off the missed shots of the uh, Lopes. But they are content to walk the ball up the floor. Of course, if you keep getting layups every time in a half court set, why not walk it up? Driving off the glass, off the mark for Nesbitt Jr. Quickly, Johnson. Carlos, Good. ooh, leaves it there for Blackshear. Javon. Underneath, Laver on Alec. Put it home. Laver swarm. Heels away. Down low. Jenkins off the glass, but he's fouled. I thought Laver was fouled when he went in there with the left hand, but the officials are letting him play a little underneath. So how, what does Blackshear do? He goes right back again from that high point attack. Fires another strike down low. Gets his other big man, Jenkins, who muscles it to the basket and gets that foul. He'll shoot two. So silky smooth, smooth yeah. with that left-handed stroke when it goes in. Tell you what, if it doesn't go in, though, it can look really, really nasty, too. So there's two sides of that coin. He's a 79% free throw shooter coming in. Yeah, he got a nice stroke. I like the way this kid is falling. Tied at 23. Hardnet back out, Alec. Cam Gain, tied by Johnson, stepped back a little bit. Yeah, this is, see, this is something North Carolina didn't do to get it against Wake Forest. He kept getting burned inside. Coach Marley's got to a zone defense. Of course, now they give up the three, so <laughs> we'll see how long he'll stay in that zone defense. They took the top right off of that with their first three-pointer of the night. 27% from the arc. Cam Gain hits it. Blackshear to his right. Dixon inside. Jenkins working on. Cam game. Dixon. Jenkins. Travel. No Marley's wondering how that is a travel. 327 to go. How about Isaiah Brown to Carlos? Love this one by Brown right here. Carlos Johnson knows what to do when he gets in on the low block.
welcome you back with our BSN athletic calendar. Softball on the road in a tournament from uh, tomorrow through Sunday in Waco, Texas. Meanwhile, back here on campus, it's a big day for men's volleyball tonight, coming off a win over USC. They go head-to-head -head with number two BYU right here. At Side GCU Arena tomorrow night. And a big congratulations to Nicole Powell's women's basketball team victorious tonight at Kansas City, 62-56 for their sixth win in a row. They are in action Saturday against Chicago State. And a reminder, tomorrow night, we are your Valentine's Day. That's right, we will be coming at you 5.30 p.m. with a pregame from baseball as GCU baseball opens its season against Oklahoma State. I'll be previewing more of what's ahead for Andy Stakewood's squad coming up at halftime and in just a few moments I'll check in with Dan Marley to get his thoughts on this first half that's been head-to-head -head with the Roos guys looking forward to that yeah baseball is back pitchers and catches reporting Cactus League action will soon be well underway yeah you're a big baseball game a guy what'd you think of all that uh, Houston oh, Astros man. stuff today huh Jeez. that didn't really they go over well well did PR it? 101 Ouch. Miscue, I think, by Commissioner Manfred as well. He can make the game look very strong. Cam Gain. Ooh, off the mark. Well, that was good D, though. The Lopes never let that ball get below the free throw line offensively, so it was easy to stay between man and ball, stay between man and in the basket. Uh-oh, oh, man. You got to stop that. Wow. Sloppy, sloppy. Three-point bruise lead with 2.41 to go. Kissing. Pardon that. Trying to turn the corner. Little floater up top. Not a very high percentage shot. Jenkins up to Blackshear. Labor moves left. Dixon beyond the arc. Alec on a little bit of support there, but pushed back out to Johnson. Carlos looking inside, goes right, step back, stops, pops, ooh, doesn't go. Labor tried to push it out, but it's picked off by Whitfield. I'm real impressed with this UMKC defense. They are a tough-nosed group. They, they really do a nice job getting back in transition, not giving up the initial break, but their defense on the secondary break, where the Lopes have had some success here recently, they're not able to get anything on their secondary break as well, really making them play in a half-court set. Alec, he wants three. In and out again by the Roos. It's a watch and win night, everybody. 602-639-8979. Text win the whack. Let us know your name and the city that you're watching from, and you'll have a chance to win a pair of tickets to the whack tournament in Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena. Oh, oh. That with a pretty hard foul. Yes, a nice pass again. Carlos Johnson passing out of the post to a cutting. Javon Blackshear, and he does a nice job. He just lets them utilize this ball fake right here, gets the man in the air, and then really pays for that contact. Good thing that young man's okay. Now he's got to go to the line and block out that pain and knock down a couple freebies. In the ball game for the Lopes, number one, I think. Now I watch these guys get hit now, and I, I, I just, ooh, I, I cringe and I wince. But when you got that adrenaline pump going, the, you, you, when you get hit that hard, it normally doesn't feel that strong. You can just kind of keep going about your business. But now that I'm 52 and fat, it, it, it hurts right here. I'm slipping down a little bit. I, I, have, I have dropped 18 pounds since the first. Which I'm excited about. Yeah. So I got, the problem is I got to drop 35 more to go. I should probably try that. Whoa! Kissing. But Whitfield, check that. A deep outside three that time. You know, Lopes doing such a good job of trying to cut off the inside. They lost the man on the outside. And then there goes another attack by, was that Blackshear again? Trying to split the double team. They fouled him. He's going to line. He's going to shoot two free throws. Harden at his second personal foul. Jordan Blackshear, Junior, to shoot two. Yeah, Coach Marl, Lee, and Coach Chu, good shot of those guys on the bench brainstorming. You know they're going to go to that locker room at halftime, make some adjustments defensively, and figure out a way to be able to stop that interior attack but not give up open looks from the outside. 
In the ball game for the Roos, number zero is Zion Williams. Hardnet checks out. You know, you, they were running up and down that floor at CBU. They lit up that scoreboard, shot 67% in the first half, and threw up 50 points. And it's a night here with 105 to play. They're sitting on 26, so a tale of two different basketball games here. But some of the, these are the ones you got to grind out. Yeah, keep it close and grind it out at the end. Allen. Good field. Back to McKissick for three. Freshman mistake that time. You got to follow McKissick. You got to keep him running and curling and curling, running back into your big guy. You try to go cut that uh, that pick that time, come across the top. McKissick just popped back. That clean look. Open up a six point lead. Bounce pass into Johnson. Waits. Doesn't go. Alec with the rebound. Yeah, great move that time. We call that a $10 move with a 10 cent finish. You got to go up with a little more power. Don't try to get cute and use the backboard. He's got those live legs. He can go up there and finish that ball with two hands over the rim. Both finishing a little bit of it with a whimper here. One for their last eight. McKissick, Alec, near side, Whitfield. I by Brown, back out. Cam Gain puts it on the floor. Back out to Alec. Three on the shot clock. Do they know it? I don't think so. Shot clock violation. Oh, that's too bad. They knocked down the three right at the end of that thing, but they're going to put a little more time back on this clock, and Lopes should have about 1.3 seconds on this clock to get a Are shot they? up. What well, they should. Are they going to? Somebody better recognize. Now I think the officials are starting to go to the, yeah, they're going to the scores table now to, to check the differential between that shot clock and the game clock. Lopes started four of five. Since that time, they are four of 15. Yeah, I saw that one three. It was it was closer to one seven one eight when it uh, hit doubles or uh, hit zero on the shot clock. We get at least another half to set seven tenths of a second here. It makes a big difference if you only catch, plant your foot, and fire. Yeah, I was out there firing those half court shots. Firing. Firing the best. Yeah, I'll be sure before the game. I was out there firing the half court shots. And the first one I just missed, I was a little short. Yeah. I overcompensated on the second one. Yeah. And caught the back rim, but right online both times. I don't want to talk about the third one. Yeah, the air ball. I didn't have to go there. I know, I'm sorry. I, I'm just recording what I saw. 1.8, I think, is what replay shows. Yeah, I'll it's tell you what, officials right over it, right on top of it there. Good job. You know, this has actually been a really a good officiated half. They've done their job, they've made their calls, and they haven't become a part of this basketball game. And just let the players go out there and feel their way through the first half. I enjoyed it. GCU has called a timeout. Marley, coach Marvin Menzies. Puddled up here. Rose will take the lead in at halftime. This is what... This is where you, you, you your half court shot, your money shot. This is where they got to do it. Right? Yeah, uh, you know, I was thinking about that when I missed that third one. I think the fans wanted me to go for a fourth one. I said three, three's my limit. Kind of like uh, Thin Mints. Three's, three's my limit. Stop every it every night. Stop that. And uh, tell the truth. That's true. That's a true story. Three, three's my limit. I started to try to do two, but three, really? three's the limit. But when I don't make it, Lopes struggle in the first half. Generally, when I make that half court shot. Lopes yeah. go on to a powerful first half shot with the game. A first, That's first a lot half of pressure. with the game. That is a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure on, on me. Shoulders. Yep. That's why I come over sometimes. I'm, I'm yep. doing, I'm doing my, you know, opening there for the pregame yep. show. I got sweat. Sweat. Right. I'm sweat yep. Yep. because you know, I know you down. I got fans watching me. I got the there pressure of pressure. carrying the Lopes in the first half. Yep. A lot going on. Donlin uh, calls a timeout. We'll be with you for the next three nights right here on Fox 10 Extra. ESPN 3, the Cowboys, depending on uh, what publication, anywhere from 11 to 22nd, the Oklahoma State Cowboys in a three-game series. The opener at Brazzle Field at GCU Ballpark tomorrow. Kate will have the pregame at 5.30. I'll be joined by Mike Rooney at 6. And the opening pick in the corner. Uh, already expired. 32-26 is the halftime score. As the uh, Lopes tried to pull that off, just didn't get it over to Carlos Johnson in time. And Marley's going to chat it up with Alessandro Labor, a little teaching lesson there, as he'll make his way over now to Kate Longworth. 
All right, thank you guys. Well, Coach Marley, I believe the story in this first half defense, kind of a tale of two teams. But first, let's just address your squad and any adjustments you might be making after the Roos had 20 points in the paint in that first half. Yeah, they're just being a lot more physical than we are, you know, both offensively and defensively, bumping us around, getting rebounds, uh, too many turnovers, just, you know, bumping us off our spots. We got to do a better job of being more physical. And then likewise, with them really stepping up the pressure on defense, what will it take for your offense to hopefully kind of pull away in this one? Just keep moving the ball and, again, be strong. You know, we're getting bumped off our spots. We got to be able to take the contact and play through it. All right, thank you very much, Coach Marling, with some words of wisdom to his players right before that interview. And now he walks into the locker room to address the rest of the team. Right now, GCU trails at the break to the Ruse. 32-26, your score here. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more action here on the Lopes Halftime Show. We're going to check in with Andy Stinkowitz's baseball team. That's it. Sanderson Ford. Straight up offers like these. Now through President's Day, escape to a D-Banks game and a new escape for only $18.9. Lease one for only $2.59 a month. Save ten grand on all 2019 F-150 Super Cruise. Get two Arizona Diamondback tickets just for coming in. Plus, they support local sports. And donate generously to local charities. If it's important to you to do business with someone who supports our community, choose Sanderson Ford. Straight up. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. Today at Whataburger, we're picking the Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. You asked for it, and it's back. We got three chicken strips, two slices of Monterey Jack cheese, Whataburger's own buffalo sauce, a little bit of buttermilk ranch. The combination is just right. It's crunchy, and then it's spicy, and then it's cool. Your mouth is exploding with flavor. It just all works together, and then you add the cheese in there. It kind of wakes me up, honestly. My goodness. I can see myself eating this every time I come here. The Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. That's back, and it's only for a limited time. Order all your favorites from your phone. Welcome back. It's the desert, so why not bring the Scorpions inside GCU Arena for a little halftime entertainment while the Lopes are in the locker room right now, figuring out their second half game plan right now. They are trailing the Ruse of Kansas City 32-26. Kate Longworth, welcome you in to our Lopes halftime show coming at you live right here on Fox 10 Extra. Well, you just saw that halftime act before me. I should uh, say with that a disclaimer, do not try that at home. What you can try at home is tuning in to us tomorrow night, 5.30 pregame. We will be coming at you, not here from GCU Arena, but we're gonna take our show outside to the ballpark here at GCU, uh, where Andy Sakowitz's baseball team will be opening their season. A lot of expectations ride on this 2020 squad as they open up tomorrow night against Oklahoma State. Take a look at what you can expect from the Lopes on the Dime. Come on, let's go ride. Let's go. Yeah, last year, last year we thought was you know uh, one of those kind of roller coaster seasons for us. We felt like we were playing pretty good towards the end and got the tournament and we were able to put two, three good games together. Unfortunately, we, we got eliminated by a good Sac State team, good program. You know, you always want more, and um, but at the same time, it's got to move on. You know, and that's kind of what we've been been doing since we got back here in August. It's just kind of. Retooling a little bit to staff. You sit down, you, you, you put a game plan together, and try to get our, our young men to, to buy into that. As we move forward, we got to get we got to get better. We lost uh, six of our nine everyday players. You know, either signed or graduated. So there's a lot of you know returners. You got David Vitia, obviously he's pretty good behind the plate, and Cuba Bess, and then Johnny Weaver. But that's it. Everything else is pretty much it's pretty much wide open. Whatever jobs they're out there, they're they're available. Go go take them. It's competitive. And you know, whoever, whoever shows us that they deserve to be playing, we're gonna play. Oklahoma State, um, this will be the second time that they've opened up here. And this is exciting, because the first time they were here, you know, we had the, the stadium wasn't built yet, and so I'm excited to host them opening weekend, um, when we obviously got a beautiful, beautiful ballpark. They'll bring a big contingency with them, their fan base. That'll be fun, opening weekend, and then we got Oregon. That will be four games out of the shoot against some baseball programs that have 
I have a lot of success. And then we got ASU, which is exciting. Got ASU for two, one here at home and one over at their place in Tempe. You know, they're good. Shoot, they're preseason. I think I read as high as three. I think it's five Pac-12 schools are on our schedule this year. It's kind of the way we've been doing it, and hopefully the way we can continue to do it is play really good, really good programs. And but it's time. It's time for us to not just play them. It's time for us to tow it up pretty good and, and, and get after it against those ball clubs. Yeah, I think our goal every year is to win the WAC regular season. The WAC is it's competitive. The good ball clubs that we're going to be facing. You know, it's going to be a fight, as though, as it always has been. Um, then you want to get in the tournament and it becomes the, the apex of, of your season is being right then. So you build up, you build up, and you hope you're in a good spot and you get in the tournament and, and you're playing good baseball. Our fans could probably expect that last year we were, I think, fourth or fifth in the country in doubles. We had a lot of home runs. We had three guys in over 10. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen this year. But that's okay. I think we're going to have to be going to pitch really well. I think that's on paper right now. I think the strength of our ball club, the design is pitch to contact and play, and play great defense. Offensively, be, be really opportunistic. You know, we, uh, we're probably going to have to see a little bit more of, of a small ball than we've, than we've done in the past. And that's okay. That's a, that's a way to win. That's kind of, I think, what our, our fan base will see this year is, is more that type of baseball. Yeah, like I said, on paper, it looks pretty good, but then we'll find out when the, when the real bullets start flying. All right, well, we'll be with you every step of the way, Andy Stakewitz. And as you can tell, some Young Lopes fans already ready to go for tomorrow night. Opener for the baseball team, the Lopes open up their 2020 season against Oklahoma State. They're a powerhouse, and it's all coming to you. It's our Valentine's Day gift to you. 5.30 p.m., we'll get things started with the pregame show on Fox 10 Extra, provided or following all the live action on the diamond you can take. All right, well, we still have more action coming here, so we hope you're hungry for more college hoops. They're coming your way as we continue this halftime show. We'll check in with Perry and Scott to get their thoughts and uh, some stats, highlights, and much, much more when we return right after this. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are gonna come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security, and most importantly, that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people and teams to discover their true potential, but you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's PhD in Performance Psychology online degree program gives you the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level and do it all within your tight schedule. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Ruse on top, 32-26 at the half. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, back with you from GCU Arena. 20 of those 32 points in the paint for Kansas City. Uh, they're doing some damage down low. They are really wrecking havoc uh, in that Lopes interior defense. They got to figure out a way to keep them out of the paint. Lopes got to get on the on the offensive glass as well. Just one offensive rebound, not enough for Coach Marley and his staff, I'm sure. And they also got to get better bump off that bench. They're getting out scored 13 to 2 on the bench. Let's check out our first half highlights of this one. Javon Blackshear with 10 points. They're delivered by SRP. Yeah, Blackshear was absolutely fantastic early in this basketball game. He was super aggressive. I love that hoop and a harm right there. Knocked down an outside three pointer as well. Ruby we'll really moving the basketball from side to side. He gets a clean look from the outside. It was fantastic. And then Labor kind of got himself going with the interior attack. They kept trying to feed the big man down low, and you know, it was a great catch in traffic and a finish, but he really was racking up the fouls. They got into that double bonus situation with five and a half minutes to go. They were shooting free throws to one and one with 10 and a half minutes to go. They got to get back to that. Carlos Johnson, he had some 
flashes here and there as well. I love that one right there because that's great interior passing once again. And then this one here by Brown, he does a nice job. I don't know how he finds Johnson on that pace line, but that was, the, that was pretty much it right there for the Lopes. Other than that, they got to pick it up here in the second half. First half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. 52% from the field. The rebounding margin very tight. We mentioned the points in the paint, the margin 20 to 10, and the bench points you just touched on that, 13 to 2. We will step aside. Kate will be back from GCU Arena. We are moments away from the start of the second half here in Phoenix, so keep it right here. Crave the night or savor the day. Here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers and we're USAA members for life. USAA, get your insurance quote today. All right, we welcome you back here as we're getting ready to tip off the second half action inside GCU Arena. Right now, the Lopes down six to the Ruse of Kansas City. And remember, these two teams met back in January. Grand Canyon came away with the W. And tonight, hoping to do the same. Right now, the freshman, Blackshear Jr., we've become accustomed to this, really just stepping up his game. He's averaging 10 points per game so far this season and already has 10 to his name in this first half. Labor checking in with seven points. Meanwhile, for the Ruse, Cam Gate also with seven points. All right, when we come back, we'll have more action. Dan Marley telling me just moments ago, the team looking to make some adjustments. They had to be a little bit more physical inside the paint and win those small battles to make some big differences on the scoreboard. All right, we'll be back with more right after this. I choose Sanderson Ford. Straight up offers like these. Now through President's Day, escape to a D-Banks game and a new escape for only $18.9. Lease one for only $2.59 a month. Save ten dollars on all 2019 F-150 Super Cruise. Get two Arizona Diamondback tickets just for coming in. Plus, they support local sports and donate generously to local charities. If it's important to you to do business with someone who supports our community, choose Sanderson Ford. Straight up. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP. Delivering water and power. Okay, he's making it a habit here, Frankie Muniz. Malcolm in the middle. The avid Lopes fan now. Good to see him here at GC Arena. Our watch and win contest winner for WAC tickets at the tournament in 
Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena, March 11th through the 14th. The winner is Stephen G. Abbott, local fan from Phoenix, Arizona. Remember to tune in Saturday night. Could be your chance on that watching win night to get a pair of tickets to the WAC tournament. Well, Scott, a little bit of a different story than uh, the offensive output of the Lopes at California Baptist. There's about a 77-point differential uh, that they have to make up to match that 103 points that they scored. Yeah, I don't see that happening, but uh, what I do want to see happen is them to get a little tougher defensively. Lopes allowing this team to come in and shoot 52% on their home floor. We have not seen that much, if at all, in the D1 era under Coach Marlin. No field goals the last 6.45 for GCU. Started 4 to 5 from the field, finished 4 to 15 in case he gets on the board early. Jordan Giles. Giles. Well, we're just talking about them trying to protect the game, limit the easy touches, and they do a nice little job cutting right across the top of the. Uh, GCU defense with a little wheel action go right inside for an easy two. Black here. Trying to move. Kick back out. Johnson. Beyond the arc. Black here. Found by Cam game. Find some room. A little floater off the glass. And in. Come on, Black here, Jr. Black here so good at going opposite of the screen, meaning the screen is set up for him to come to his left. And he just kind of fakes like he's going to his left, comes back to the right for his 12th point. McKissick to his right. Missed a couple of games. Concussion protocol back tonight. Zion Williams, bounce pass inside. Giles fouled by Okpo. Yeah, that's a tough matchup by Okpo. He's given up some kilos down there. He got to get in the weight room, get a little stronger when he comes back next season. Be able to guard down there on that post. That young man put him in the torture chamber, and Oko had no choice but to go ahead and foul him, put him on the line. Trials 81% from the charity strike. The guns on that young man. <laughs> it looks like he eats 10-pound dumbbells. First 13 games for Giles, 6.4 points per game. The last 12, 14.4 points per game. Went up on that career all-time scoring list as well, closing in on number 17 on that UMKC list. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Play with a guy from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, North Carolina. Pete Chilcutt. Is that, is, that the, that is that where the University of Alabama is? Yeah. Okay. Nick Saban. He'll be back there next year. He's a fly. Look, look in the win a national championship. He'll be back. <laughs> He's shocked he got shut out of the playoffs, isn't he? Doesn't happen very often in no. Alabama. I was mad when he put that guy to a, left him in the game and he got hurt, mm. but I forgive him now. Johnson inbound. Jiggins, Blackshear, he was right. Far side, up over the top to Johnson. How about that? I'll tell you what, that is a great pass. I mean, for a freshman to have the patience to let that play develop and deliver a strike right over the top of the defenders with a help side defense on the way. Oh, travel. Got a little Foster handle on that. Got a little out of control. And look at this one more time. Just enough touch. You put it right where Johnson can get it, but right where the help side defense can't get to it. And Johnson then, boom, right back up off the floor and lays it in off the basket. Now, Lopes need to try to milk that one. Maybe they can go back inside for another bucket to labor. We got some man on his back. Oh, they couldn't get it. Blackshear, labor off the glass and in. Blackshear is spoon feed his top scorers on this Lopes defense. I think a, a tenth of a point separates Johnson and Labor for high scoring honors. And, Blackshear says I can give two to you, so I now can come back and give two to Laver on the other end. Three assists for Javon. McKissick moves left. Near side. Directing traffic, Giles. 
Trying to work on blacks here. Lost it a bit. Still trying to gather it in. Shot clock. Expired. We hadn't seen a defensive effort since early in the first half like we just saw there. Blackshear smothered him like a straight jacket. It's all over him, and I love this one right back here. He just comes down here and just says, okay, I got it so deep now, I don't think I can score, but I got a seven-footer over here that I know he knows what to do with the ball down low. Blackshear with 12, Labor 9, Johnson 7. Labor trying to move on Alec, moves white. Off the mark, Giles pulls it down. Yeah, kind of a half hook, half jump shot. I think he got confused as to which way he wanted to shoot the hook shot or the jump shot. Thought he would have been better off just going to the jump shot after that far out. Giles, long distance short by McKissick. Uh, I think they're gonna get Lorenzo Jenkins pushing underneath. Down there on oh, Alec. Alec. Alec's played well. I, you look at the, the matchup and you think Laver should be owning that. But Alec has been holding his own for sure. He's a big, strong, athletic player. He's up for the challenge. Six checks out. Into Williams. Whitfield. Quickly to the left. Hardnet. Now to Giles for three. A rebound pulled down by Blackshear. Oh, now the Roos have gone cold after yep. a couple buckets inside. They've gone cold from the perimeter. 208 and counting for their drought. Johnson trying to move on Zion Williams. And it drops her the How about Carlos Johnson? I tell you what, this kid is really showing some patience and strength. Look at back him up, back him up, bang him one more time here. Now the spin move, take that contact, and then he hangs in the air long enough to get himself back under control to be able to softly put the ball through the basket. Not a lot of guys can do that. And Carlos Johnson has proved that there's not a lot of guys at the Western Athletic Conference can stop him from doing it. Three personal fouls on Giles. It seemed like he just shot it and fast to the basket. <laughs> like it was burning his fingertips. Two point Rouge lead. They led 32 26 at the half. Kissick. Labor with a stop. You shall not pass, and they're off and running. Stopping, popping Jenkins. Oh, it doesn't go. That would have been a lid lifter. That ball was halfway down before it squirted back out. <laughs> A chance for the lead right there. Hard net. Slowing it down. Comes back up top. Whitfield. Lost it. Dixon on the run. Foul on Whitfield. <laughs> the officials were so far behind, so far behind the play. They had to call the foul that time, but nice job by Dixon getting that steal. I love this one by Flavor. He stays high without letting it get to his body. Gets the swap, the lopes are off and running, and I tell you what, they got the momentum back in this game. Two point disadvantage when we come back. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. GCU Men's Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power.
Curry Butel, Scott Williams, and Kate Longworth here at GC Arena. Let's send it down to Kate. All right, well, we'll have more men's basketball action coming your way. But first, let's check in on the women's basketball side because right now, Nicole Powell's team has sole possession of first place as they came up tonight with a big 11-0 run to close things out at Kansas City. Kansas City was the former conference leader, but uh, really, youth is carrying this team so far this season. They're really performing beyond what everyone expected, and tonight was more of the same as Jada Holland carried the team tonight. 15 of her 18 total points came in that final quarter, quarter of tonight's action for the 62-56 victory. That is their sixth straight win, guys, and they're looking for lucky number seven straight win on Saturday night when they go head-to-head -head with Chicago State. Congrats to Nicole Powell. You see a women's hoops team. Yeah, really happy First place. Yeah. Hey, it's just shocking, shocking the whole conference. They'll never pick their seventh again, will they? Disrespectful. Cole Powell's team. Jada Holland, 15 points in the fourth. And he held KC scoreless in the final four, 57 of the game. He closed the game in an 11-0 run. About that? Coach Marley after those two free throws decided to come out in a three-quarter press. And he forces UMKC nice. to have to burn a timeout. They weren't ready to break that trap. This half, the Lopes four of six from the field, while the Ruse are one of four. Carlos Johnson, 25 points at CBU. And he's, and he's doing his darn thing again tonight. I like this one right here. He goes back inside, takes that contact at the finish, and that was a beautiful pass there in the first half. Already talked about that one here in the second half from Bob Blackshirt, and this one he just does it all on his own, all the way out to the three-point line, backs the guy all the way underneath the basket. He's got nine points on seven field goal attempts, four for seven in 22 minutes. So I'll get some heavy minutes and produce it. Some news and notes from around the whack. New Mexico State on top, 25 straight conference victories. That's 39 37. Seattle holding it tight there, just two points for the Aggies. How about Pascal Siakam? Remember him? Oh, do I. I had a man crush on Siakam. Wow. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Named an NBA All Star oh, starter. Terrell Brown leading scores of the wax 20 points per game from seattle u there's on davis from cbu leading and rebounding at 9.4 rebounds per game well you still going through that transition to d1 they've come out of the gates really strong much they, like gcu did yeah, it's almost a mirror image yeah. <laughs> the kind of the atmosphere that they've created over there and how well the team is doing or early in the conference and not being able to be eligible for the tournament in Vegas, it reminds me of when the, when the Lopes were challenging for that title and they just couldn't, couldn't go to Vegas. But you know, this Lopes team right now, they're they're finding themselves in a, in a dog fight here. They've missed three free throws here in their last three attempts. So they'd have the lead in this basketball game, but they got to win this game. I mean, they can make this three in a row, and then you got Chicago State coming in here where everybody pounds when they're at home. So. You your chance to win this one and then go for four in a row on Saturday is almost a given. Oh, they got a hand on it, but uh, Black sure Jackson. just couldn't get it. Good yes. hustle, man. Nike stepped on the line before he could flip it back between his legs. Even five hole did. His motor is nonstop. You like this, kid. Man, it's going to be fun to watch. Good pain to sit up here and call the action with Black Shirt for the next yep. three years. That's a good thing. Long distance, well off the mark. Yeah, I, think I don't understand. He had three seconds to still shoot that ball and settle on a 28-footer. It looked like it was rushed. Sure. Dixon. Jenkins. Trying to get it. Oh, come on. Force that one in. Picked off. Empty by White. possessions. The, the breakaway by... Mikey Dixon that they didn't get and resulted in 0 for 2 from the free throw line and then a turnover there. The Lopes got a little sloppy after that series of timeouts. Whitfield, he can hit. 
Oh, that's off the mark. Jenkins with the rebound. Jenkins doing a nice job on that glass. How many boards has he got tonight? Four boards for Jenkins off that punt. Down to Jenkins. Try to move on Zion Williams. Foul. That's that lefty action. See, the lefty, the player thinks he's going to come back to that left shoulder turn right hand. Look, but they forget he's a lefty, so he wants to get to a right shoulder turn, spin into that baseline for his left hand. Look, catch him out of position, get that body contact. Now he's going to the line where you say he's a 79% free throw shooter. Three fouls on Williams. At CBU, Brown checks in for Dixon. Side up, 36-36. 8 -0 run for GCU. And Lopes slapping that full court pressure on him again after the made free throw. Ryan William, pardon that, inside the white, working on labor. What? What, what, what was happening there? I, I don't understand the call from the official, other than the fact that they were banging real hard down low, and I think the official wanted to clean it up, but I, I thought the offensive player had as much contact into the chest of Laver as Laver had back at him. Oh, he's been great. for the ruse. Hardnett took it to the basket. They're really good at their baseline, out-of-bounds play, they're silent out-of-bounds plays. They have gotten point-blank shots time and time again with execution. How many times have they drilled that in practice? It just pays off in the game. Off the mark. Jenkins. Blackshear brings it up. Johnson leads for Javon. Right in front of the Lopes bank. Is that a makeup call? I, 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 won, I won because I saw the same sort of action at the other end as we did here. So I said such, such a good job in the first half praising the officials of not getting involved in this game. And it seems like here in the first seven minutes, now they're starting to blow that whistle. Inbound back to Brown. Flag. We're going to do body surfing. You should do that one there. Oh, Labor. Labor trying to move on White. White's call for the foul. Call on the ruse number 25. Well, they have been constantly going to their big fella down low on that block. And whether he's racking up fouls on that ruse roster uh, or getting himself to the free throw line because they don't have an answer for his ability down there on that block. It's not just his sizes. He's got tremendous footwork he has developed over the last year and a half. It is really paying off for this Lopes team for himself. Labor back at the line. gotten a steal with this trap, but he had to put pressure on them. Up high! Yikes! Uh, One past that first line of the defense, and then it was just a three-on-two after that, and the high handoff is always a pretty play. Well run by the Roos. Getting into some doldrums here a little bit, but Blackshear tried to do it by himself. Labor found it. The ball, turn around and put back! Uh, he just followed his guy right to the basket. Big fella went for the block, and he didn't get it, but Labor was there to clean up. And I love when Labor grabbed that offensive rebound. He kept that ball high, little shoulder fake, got the man to commit. Then he went up and just flipped it in with the left hand. He's got 12 points and six boards. White alone. Near side, hard net. Quickly back to White. Back off his foot. Foul. Yeah, I 
I think they got Lorenzo Jenkins slapping down on the wrist. Looked pretty clean from up here, but you know, I'm 150 feet away from the, from the action. The referee's right down there, so I give him the benefit of the doubt of making that call. Who's he now? Oh, man, you ain't kidding, right? Are they good at their inbounds or what? They keep mixing it up and oh. mixing up the, the lopes. That's got them so confused. It is, it is embarrassing, but they're running it with great execution. Here we go with the whistles now. Here we go. Four. Yeah, that's 17 Williams. fouls. That's going to put the lopes on the line. They're shooting free throws the rest of the way. Williams is going to have to check out. He's got four. The last time they got the one on one with about 10.45 to go. And now they're getting the one on one situation with 12.30 to play. Is that. Is that a fair uh, doppelganger there? Is, is Mayor Pete look a little like Coach Donnelly? Uh, I, I didn't see it. <laughs> He's got a little Mayor Pete in there. Mayor, Mayor Pete? Who's Mayor Pete? Mayor Pete Budigiger. Oh, guy, Buda, oh Buda, run, running for president. That yeah, guy. Yeah, that guy. Ah, yeah, I got a bit of better. Let me get a, let me get a better shot of him later in the game. I got to check him out. Maybe, maybe it's a real shot of him. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> First lead for the Lopes since 624 of the opening half. 41-40, GCU. White trying to move, turn around, get some help with the rim. That was pretty. Nice play by White down there. Took his time and operated on Laver. Backing in, Jenkins. Oh, right. foul though. Look at Jenkins that's knows good. that every time I get that body contact, I'm just going to go to the line with my sweet stroke. Ruse back up by one. 11.58 to go. We'll step aside. Be right back. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are going to come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security and most importantly that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Kate Longworth, welcome you back to GCU Basketball. And I'm joined by former Diamondback, Steven Souza Jr. We were just talking about your first game out here at GCU and being a two-sport athlete in college, what does an atmosphere like this bring to the game? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I mean, this is why you come to college, right? It's for atmospheres like this, especially like an amazing university like Grand Canyon. It's uh, it's cool to see, you know, it's not like a big name like Duke, but I'll tell you what, if I were a basketball player, I'd want to come here for sure. And I know for you, uh, fans mean a lot to you and the support and you want to get back. I know your tenure didn't play out like you hoped in Arizona, but you stayed in Arizona for spring training with a chance with the Cubs this season. What are you anticipating with Chicago? A healthy year, you know. I mean, I've, I've been hurt the last two years. I love this game. I love the team that I'm on. It's just a, uh, an amazing talent, a uh, great group of guys. And look, we're we're like everybody else. We're trying to win the World Series, and we have a legit shot to win it this year. I think. Well, I want to toast to you and your future. Can you wonder why I brought some Gatorade out? I think it's called payback. Oh! I deserve that. I deserve that. That's it. That's it. Well, oh, best of luck with Chicago's team. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank Kate you. was too slow, man. She's got to tell me shit out. Look at him. He got trenched. <laughs> too slow. No, man. no, no. That went over my head that and really on me. That wasn't fair. That's assault right there. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck with the Cubs. Yeah, the Cubs. I, I, my <laughs> office is like three minutes from Sloan Sloan? Park. Yeah. Yeah. I plan on getting out the Salt River Fills, too. I got a contact with the D backs. Is that the hook? Yeah. Well, Kate. What, okay. And her sidekick Vanessa. Okay. I got, I got, I got to work them hard for some tickets this year. The weather is, the weather is going to be great for spring training this year. Beautiful. 
Whitfield for three. Big loft on that. A little heavy. Yeah, by the way, the Lopes got the lead back on those two Jenkins free throws. Oh, we were having so much fun with that baseball attack. Mm -hmm. Brown, how about it? Yeah, baby! Oh, what can Brown do for you? Quite off that bench all night. Gets a queen look from the right wing and knocks down the triple. Okay, McLaughlin. That knee is healing. Just fine, thank you. White looked inside, now left. Jenkins, by the way, eight of eight from the free throw line. Four point low play, driving. I think they got it on the dribble Brown. drive. A little, little too much contact out there outside that paint, which is a good thing because the Lopes were not in a penalty, so it's going to be uh, baseline out of bounds. But maybe that's a bad thing because they have been executing these baseline out of bounds plays oh. to perfection. But I love that one there by Brown. No hesitation. Kiss it. Bounce pass. White turns. Double team Jenkins in White. On him. Oh, loose ball. Jenkins disrupted. Pack to Lorenzo and a foul on McKissick. Well, you wonder why they're double teaming White. Well, that's why he's not good at passing out of the double team. They forced a turnover and they're off and running. Nice job by Carlos Johnson. Moving the ball ahead to his teammate gets fouled. Who Carlos Johnson, I mean, excuse me, Lorenzo Jenkins is getting real comfortable at that charity stripe. He's he's got a little welcome mat out there on that charity stripe. He's been there so many times here in the second half. Correction, that last follow on number three, Brandon McKissick, his third personal. Lorenzo Jenkins to shoot two. Clearly McKissick. Not sure who they originally called, but that's three on McKissick. Oh. Frank Camden. Don't, leave. Don't say a word. Seven oh run for GCU. Under eleven to go. Kiss it. Back out white, wide open look. Rebound later. Uh, these rules have gone cold. Their offensive game has left them here. Time for the Lopes to make some, make their move. Try to build on that lead. Blackshear drives out. Brown. How about Jenkins? Ten for ten, uh, ten for ten from the free throw line. The first time since Josh Braun did 11 for 11 from the free throw line on January 14th. 2017. I thought that was a great one for Labor. That long free throw right in front of the hoop. That norm's normally one he can. Cam gain inside of Giles, kind of a no looker. Yeah, Lorenzo Jenkins did not do his work early enough. They let him. He let his man post him up where he was looking up through the rim. That's never a good thing if you're playing defense. Dixon at the scorer's table, waiting to come in. Four point Lopes lead. Blackshear bounce pass into Johnson. Johnson forward. Man. Oh, that's a flop. Oh my God. They, where they've been letting Are him bang down there me? that low. I mean, they've been, he, 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 he got the contact and sold it. I'll tell you what, he could be in that movie Parasite with the acting job he just did on this one here. I mean, he acted like he got shot with a cannonball. Carlos Johnson barely started his move. Wish they'd get rid of that. They, they start calling flops in the NBA after years of me screaming about how it was ruining the game. They finally start calling that, making finally, a technical foul and start fouling people, oh. or fighting people. How about, oh! Damn game. Good Carlos, all right. Yeah, he looks like he's okay. He's going to go a lot. He's tough. Dusty Moff is going to go shoot two free throws. He's not coming out of this game. <laughs> Those are points to be had. Right. Look at this one more time. Carlos Johnson just gets to the fights to the outside. Yeah. Tried to five hole. Yeah, a little nutmeg. <laughs> yeah, the, old, the nutmeg, that's what it is. <laughs> Go right there between his legs and, and keep going, but stuck his knee out there and tripped him. Alec at the scorer's table for the Ruse. Palms are starting to get sweaty. These guys got to start making these free throws. This game's going to come right down to the wire, and these free throws are going to loom large towards down the stretch. Can he yield it over to Lorenzo? His free throws are a little, little heavy. 
Oh. A little mustard on it. There you go. All right, five point lead, under 10 to play. <laughs> Buckle up, everybody. It's going to be a wild ride to the final horn. 10 of 15 from the charity stripe this half for GCU. Cam Game leaves for McKissick. Giles trying to drive. Left handed floater. Too heavy, but Giles able to get a hand on it. Whoa, Cam Game. Misses his way in. Those moves are fast to that basketball when it's loose on the floor. McKissick. Giles for three. No. Rebound, Allen. Whoa! Man, what's going on here? Did he Alec. just jump over him? Or was it by the side? It looked like he jumped right over the top of the guy with the basketball. I've never seen that before. Wow. 30 years of basketball. I don't think I've ever seen anybody jump over. He did. Oh. Right to the top. I don't know if he ducked it one to the side or he went right over the top. But Carlos Johnson tried not to commit the foul, pulled the legs up. Alec at the line, one of two tonight. 67% from the line. Nope. Brown to Dixon. Johnson. Whoa. Loose ball, Alec up to McKissick. McKissick moves right, off. Charge on McKissick! Well, nice job of Brown once again, getting back in transition defense and protecting the basket. He gets down here, gets his feet outside the arc and catches just enough of the body there. And officials give him the uh, benefit of the doubt and blow the whistle going the other way. For a McKissick, he'll sit down. Yeah, he's got to sit. That in. Can't afford to lose him. So it's uh, eight minutes and 20 seconds still left in this game. Jared Martin would be proud. Up high, labor, swarm. Ooh, up, 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 over the top of Dixon's fingertips. Getting sloppy with the basketball. Back-to-back yeah. -back turnovers. You got a chance to build this lead to double digits and turn, turn the ball over like they're hotcakes. Pardon that. Williams. Or Cam Gain inside to Giles. Yeah, Giles is a beast down there. He's getting good low post position and operating. Brown, near side, Johnson. Alec out to meet Labor. Finds Dixon on the far side. Brown over the top of Labor. Ruse ball with. 7.34 to go. It's a three-point lead that the Lopes are clinging to now as it gets a little sloppy on both sides of the floor. Javon Blackshear Jr., solid game tonight. 12 points on the evening, a solid opening half. He's been scrambling as he has for a number of loose balls. He is just all out hustle. I love this kid. Yeah. <laughs> this kid just goes out there and balls. You know, he doesn't care what the score is. He doesn't care if he's up or down. He plays with that same level, that same intensity, and it's infectious for the rest of his teammates. Yeah, he loves to dish the ball off as well as making things happen all by himself. Well, I love this one right here because this is early in the basketball game when the team is trying to get started. He sets a tone for the attacks inside, gets a hoop and a harm, and comes back with a swing from side to side, gets a three-point, and starts boom, boom feeding his bigs underneath. And that one, he took a little fancy dribble inside out, took it away from the defender and scored. And boy, I'll tell you what, his vision when he's in, going 110%, still able to find his teammates and then that pressure. That's why Coach Marley going to that trap. He's got that guy that can go out there and just be a ball hawk. Got 12 points, go along with eight rebounds, and oh yeah, he leads the team in assists, and he's leading them again tonight with four. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Lopes have runs of 8-0 and 7-0. This half, assistant coach Isaac Chu, pretty animated. Jenkins with 10, Johnson with 10, and the labor with 12, Blackshear with 12, four double figures. So 
Williams and McKissick have four personal fouls each. 7.34 to go. There's a little similarity. I don't mean to make light of it. Maybe it's the haircut, Mayor Pete. Yeah, I, I, I see where your head's at there. Yep. They got a little similar look there, body style, size and stuff too. Yep. Well, I don't know how tall Mayor Pete is. But... A little what bit happened there? That like, kicked the, the foot? kicked the ball out of bounds. There, anything to get a stop? <laughs> Lopes are trying to uh, scratch and claw this victory out. Oh, watch the middle. Those guys are so good at finding their way to the front of the rim off those baseline out of bounds plays. Whoa, wide run off the rim. Big rebound pushed out by Labor, picked up by Hardnett. Giles swarmed, trying to get free. Oh, man, are you kidding me? Uh, they let him split the double team. Dixon and Laver just didn't stay connected down there. Giles squirts through with that left hand, and he squirts that thing off the glass like Lorenzo Jenkins likes to do. Now he's got a chance to go to the line and tie this basketball game up. Well, you get burned on one end on, on offense with the turnovers, and then you come down the other end, and. Let them split the defense after they get an offensive rebound. They get a second chance, some second chance points, and now Lopes find himself not in back up. And they have plenty of opportunities. Oh, they missed that free throw, so they'll still have a one point lead. But they got to get smarter and a little bit more stingy with that basketball down here, not just cough it up. Labor back to Johnson. Trying to drive, trying to find Labor. Labor. Just trying to keep the ball in play, and somehow, I have no idea, Black here ended up with four on the shot clock. Puts up a long three. Off the mark, rebound, picked up by Whitfield. Yeah, empty possession. They, their passing was so good early in this basketball game to the interior. has gotten real shaky here. Now they're just throwing that ball all over the gym. Getting, losers are getting their deflections and turn those things into steals. Wide open three for Alec. Heavy. I'm gonna eat my hat if he hit that one. I tell you what, this kid does a lot of good things out of the night. He starts knocking in three three pointers from 23 feet. You <laughs> know that's not the Lopes night. Inside the labor. Pushed out. Can they get one clean possession where the Roos don't get a hand on the basketball? It seems like they have. And, and let me just start giving the Roos some credit because they yeah. have picked up the intensity defensively and causing some of this. Uh, these malfunctions for the Lopes offense. See how the Lopes do. Baseline. Out to Jenkins. Black shoot. Ten on a shot clock. Labor. Six. Five. Backing in on Ellick. Turnaround. Foul. You count that bucket. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> that, that was like the old Keem Elijah one dream shake down along the baseline there. <laughs> Fading away, got the hoop in the bucket. Go with the harm. That official has blown the whistle 80% of the time. Yeah, <laughs> got a little drunk smile on his face right there. He's not sure that he committed the foul, but. Blowing that whistle, like you say, a lot more here in the second half of the, to me than, it, than they did in the first half, which is always tough for the players to adjust to that. When they're used to the game being called one way, and all of a sudden it changes so drastically hard to adjust. Three-point lead. Hardnett looks inside, finds Giles. Labor comes over. Hardnett, quick ball movement, Whitfield, he's lethal. Yes. Oh, How do you leave the best three-point shoot, three shooting player on the opponent wide open? Yeah, and that double team, you got to scramble. You got to get out of that double team fast, kick the guy that's in the inside back out so he can close out to that three-point shooter. 
Mikey Dixon, a little over penetration. Couldn't control the basketball through the trap. Tied at 51. Okpo in for labor. Cam Dane bounce pass, Whitfield inside. Way back out, Hartnett for three. Rebound. Dixon, under five to go. Great challenge on that three-point shot that time. Dixon to Johnson. Johnson trying to weave his way around. Man, all alone Cam Gain. Uh, Lopes just stopped playing. They, they thought that Johnson was going to get whistled for a foul because anytime somebody gets hit, they do go and they call the foul. That time they let him play, and they let him go four, you know, 75 feet, lay the ball on the basket. They get a tough one to lose the game on two points, and you stop playing. Johnson has his finger wrapped on that left hand. Ooh, did he get hard now? Yeah, yes, they certainly did. did. He, Johnson with a strong cut off that backside action to the basket. He reached out and had to grab her. Johnson at the line. Johnson's got to make his free throws now. Yes, he does. <laughs> he, he was so good at CBU going 9 of 11 from the stripe. He got to start picking it up from the stripe here tonight. It's crunch time, baby. Ten points for Johnson. He's been stuck on that for a little while. Too long. There he is. Labor back in. Labor has three personal fouls. There you go. That was smooth right there. Yeah. I think he's getting his confidence back from that free throw line. Tied at 53. Who's going to pull away? Four minutes to go here in Phoenix. You don't watch that weak side screening action. They like to screen and cut away from the basket. Hard that inside. Giles turns on Jenkins. Making his way into the paint. He goes left hand off the glass. You know, the defense is good, all of those except for the point that there was no hand up. It was like he was so much in the concentrating on taking away from that, that middle move that forgot to get his hands up when the guy went to shoot the basketball. Johnson. Moves good D. Jenkins, three. Way off the mark. Lay blocks here, tried to get it. Energy level here, waning for the Lopes. Hey, you, even the Havocs are starting to get a little nervous. <laughs> They're not sure what's going on here. They want to see their team attack. Inside, Alec reverse off the glass. Just oh my, now four-point disadvantage. Under three minutes to play. Where do the Lopes go here? They need a bucket. I think they need to go back inside the labor. Dixon drives baseline. Little floater. That's short. Oh, see a white. Alec pulls it down. But that's a tough Pretty. shot. That's a tough Man. shot going to that baseline. Like you said, there's a lot of white shirts down there. I thought he should have dropped it in the labor, played a little inside out action. Labor gets that foul. You know he's going to go to the line and make his free throws. Labor is laboring. Then over at the waist as it comes up there. Off the glass and in, making it look easy. It's Kansas City. Timeout. Marley. 2.28 to go. Six-point KC lead on a 6-0 run. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. When my hot water heater failed, 
She was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Tonight, the first of three broadcasts on Fox 10 Extra. Tomorrow from Brazel Field, and then Saturday, Chicago State. 5.30 tip, or a pregame with Kate. Tip at 6 as the Cougars come to town. That'll close out this brief two-game homestand for the Lopes. But first, as I mentioned, Brazel Field at GCU Ballpark. Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yep. First of three against Lopes. It's the home opener. Hope to see you at the ballpark tomorrow. 6 p.m. first pitch. It'll have a free game at 5.30 right here on Fox 10 at ESPN 3. And uh, inside GC Arena tomorrow night, the number two ranked BYU Cougars. Men's volleyball taking on the GCU Lopes have already knocked off the likes of USC and Stanford. Ooh. Could be an epic matchup. They play the best three out of five in volleyball. Is that correct? Yep. They still play the 15. Each game to play. Uh, I think it's 25. Oh, 25. Okay. Think about backyard volleyball. Play the 15. Watch you near side. Well, nice. Right up the gut. Kicked out. Johnson pulls it down. Back out, Laver, Brown, bounce pass, Jenkins back to Brown. Into Laver. Brown ends up with it, eight on the shot clock. Johnson drives, Loader not there, foul. Underneath by Alec yeah. on Johnson. Uh, Alec got so far into that basket, you can't take a charge in that restricted area. So once Johnson got down there, he just made a beeline right for him and said, if I can get contact there, that's an automatic trip to the free throw line. I love the energy level at which the Lopes played that possession. I wish they would have had that in the previous five possessions and they wouldn't be trailing by six points. Ball spent a lot of time on the rim there, didn't it, before it slid back down that hole. Just a corner. Clarifies 25 until set number five, and then it's 15 in set number five. Gotcha. How many times did he even get to set number five? In a lot. It's oh, drama filled, too. Oh, okay. Certainly not for the Lopes against the University of Southern California and Stanford. <laughs> Alec Whitfield. Pardon that. Chewing up the clock, loose ball. Oh, it goes out. Low ball. Oh, what a pressure defense by the Lopes. When they really needed to turn it up, they get a great offensive possession and turn around, and that translates into great swarming defense. And they're going to get the basketball back here with a minute 34 to play, find themselves down four. McKissick in for Whitfield. But a three with a foul. Brown. Back out. Jenkins looks inside the labor. Heavy traffic. Labor with the left hand foul. Nah, it doesn't. Well, that was a risky pass that time by Jenkins, but you could see the emphasis was to get that ball down to Alessandro Labor, team's second leading scorer, and see if he could get a bucket inside. And like you said, that ball hung on that rim. It tried to go back down, but. It did not, so Labor will have to earn the two points at the free throw line. But I like this energy. All of a sudden, there's a boost in that Lopes. You can just feel it. Alec is going to sit down. Five personal fouls. We have one heck of a basketball game. I like the way that kid plays. He's got five points, seven boards. Go with those five fouls. But a ton of energy and hustle plays. He. He earned that scholarship tonight. Does that potentially maybe free up Laver down low? Because Alec was working him hard. Yeah, he was playing good, solid defense on Laver, making it real tough for him. And only 
two offensive rebounds all game because Alec was down there patrolling that defensive glass. No. The Lopes go back down here, get a stop. I, I like him going to Laver and, and Johnson down the stretch. Either one, the best opportunity, probably Laver inside, play a little inside out. Free throws were the answer to the Lopes' victory at KC when they were 6 for 6 Picked off, Blackshear. Foul on Hardman. Have I mentioned I man, love this kid? <laughs> you talk about I had a man crush on Pascal Siakam. I got a man crush on little Javon Blackshear because this is a great absolute play here. He reaches out and just gets that ball with his left hand and then grabs it and goes and lays it in the basket. Look at that long arm of Blackshear stopping that basketball with his left hand. Maybe a Nike. And uh, whoops, goes right back to the basket with it and draws the foul. 13 points, nine rebounds, four assists. Board away from a double double. This is a huge, huge game for the Lopes. They have got to get this one. 6 0 run for GCU. The press is on. Luxier. McKissick. Hardnett. Double team, hard net. Da! Timeout, Donlin. Couldn't get over the official fast enough. He ran all the way to half court to call that timeout. His play was in that coffin corner where he had the back court line. He dribbles the ball right over the back court line and picks it up. Now you got a third defender with that back court line. You even got a fourth defender with that sideline. And his coach went over and bailed him out. Here we go, tied at 59, 106 on the clock. I'll tell you what, every time we come to the arena this year, it seems like it's a cardiac arrest, but you never know what you're gonna get with, with these lows. They can be cruising along, and then it, it becomes a tough game at the end, or they can be down, and all of a sudden they fight themselves back with this full court pressing action, creating steals, getting to the line, and making free throws. Is close to a must win for the Lopes. Five of their last seven games on their home court. Taking on a four and six KC team here tonight. Chicago State comes in winless in the whack on Saturday. Here we go, Giles. Nothing inside this trip. Make them hurt from the outside. No threes and nothing in the paint. One minute remaining, Harden that to his left. Almost lost his footing, off balance shot and goes in. I'm not even sure he saw the basket. He just knew the general vicinity where it was at and threw it up and somehow that prayer was answered. Timeout, Dan Marley, GCU. Alessandro Labor does a great job, creates a wall defensively on this drive. I don't know if he can see the basket over uh, Labor, and somehow he just manages to squirt it off the, the square and into the bucket. Got a great, great effort. Up. Great effort. Gulfport, Mississippi, the senior guard. Puts the ruse up by two. Fifty point four seconds. Jenkins inbound near the Lopes bench. Williams eyeing him. Back to Blackshear. Near side, tied by Williams. Back out, Dixon. Five, pushes back out, top of the circle. Good! Two points, ties the game up. A nice job by Dixon driving that basketball to the free throw line area, sucked the defense down, left Jenkins wide open there for the 19-foot jump shot in front of the hoop. Lopes Gotta get a stop. Have to get a stop. Hardnett taking time off the shot clock and the game clock. Down to 12, 11. Hardnett moves left. Here he goes. Straight up the gut. Another off-balance shot. Rebound, Jenkins. 
12, 11, 10. Watch your driving. Seven. Up near the bucket. Back out and there. Oh! Not gonna be there for Johnson. Foul. No. I think they got timeout underneath. Johnson had the ball point blank in front of the basket. And went and shot a little baby hook with it and went squirted off the back iron. But what a find underneath there in traffic. Johnson couldn't believe how open he was. Maybe rushed it just a hair. I can't believe he missed that one. Great penetration by Blackshear. Everybody comes to the ball. They left Johnson wide open. And I, I don't know if that swipe from the right bothered him or got a piece of the couldn't ball, the but he pops, just couldn't just get it, it in the basket. Well, only nine tenths left to go in this basketball game. If you don't foul, there's a good chance oh, you're headed to overtime. I'm glad to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Point nine. Here we go. I get some free basketball tonight. Wasn't necessarily looking forward to that. Black shoot. Well, I, I like that Coach Marley let them play off of that missed shot. Just let it push it down the down the floor. And, it looked like Blackshear had nothing initially, and he was going to circle back out to the top, but then he went and go back down to that baseline, and that's when he found Carlos Johnson right in front of the bucket, and you know that's one Johnson would like to have back. Now well, they ticked it up to one second. Let's not make it a Sports Center highlight. One thing you don't want to happen here is you don't want that old uh, Grant Hill to Christian Leitner pass that goes that travels 75 feet down the floor. You want to make sure that somebody has to catch this ball on the on the front side of half court. Don't let anybody get behind you. All the way down the court, picked off by Johnson. Overtime we go. It's tied at 61. Oh my goodness. Five minutes of free hoops. Barry, you got a lot of it. Here we go. Clock is reset at five minutes. Let's take a look at some key plays here down the stretch for GCU. Well, you got to go. One of the key ones, I think, is uh, that steal by Javon Blackshear. That was a great one. And he went to the line and Tomney made his free throws. And this one here, that one that little penetration by Mikey Dixon. Renzo's Jenkins man leaves him and then he knocks down the bucket to tie. They get a great stop defensively and a perfect find. You think the game's over, <laughs> it just squirts off the back rim. So many times that ball has been on that rim and has rolled off for the Lopes here in the second half. So Coach Marley huddling up his team. Coach Donlin doing the same for the Roos. It's a tight Western Athletic Conference. The Roos four and six. The Lopes five and four in conference play. Mexico State up on top of Seattle with about a minute to go. Yeah, 68-64, so a close one to getting all they can handle from the Red Hawks. Ropes 1-0 this year in overtime. Alec is on the bench, fouled out for KC. McKissick, Hardnett, each have four personal fouls. And we're underway with the Ruse. Bringing it up the court. Hardnett with a key bucket near the end. White, bounce pass. 
Little floater, that's short. Johnson. Two big stops in a row for the Lopes. Not sure to labor, they play catch. All right, I like the momentum that the Lopes have. And Labor off the glass with the left hand and a nice feed. Nice pick and roll basketball this time. And Labor going right down the lane. He hasn't been open that well in the, the entirety of the second half going down that lane. He's a, that's where they miss Alec down there patrolling that plate. Yep. He's fouled out on that bench. Labor with 18 points and eight boards. Whitfield with the three. Round Whitfield with the three. Get in his face. One point Ruse lead. Jenkins. Hide by Giles. Blackshear. Careful, Dixon. Whitfield almost got a hand on it. Takes the shot way off the mark. I think that got blocked. Did it? I think they got a hand on that ball. Yeah. Yep. Stiff. The official caught it. Good call. You said your eyesight's going. That was stellar. Well, I can see far. I just can't see my phone. I, oh, that's you, you can see just getting right up there and got a piece of that ball and deflected. That's why that ball's all down there. You can grab it. Always grab it. Because you never know what might have happened or how the officials may call it. Six on the shot clock, five. Lots here, Labor puts it down. He's got to shoot. In and out. Looks need another stop. Looking three and a half to go in overtime. Whitfield. Hardnet beyond the arc on the wing. Back out. White leaves for Hardnet. Comes back out top. Steps back. Eyed by Blackshear. Whitfield again, a wide open look. In and out, Johnson with the rebound. Yeah, you better start yeah. chasing him. You try to come over the top on those screens, you're getting burned on that bait, on those uh, fadeaway three-point shots. It goes Johnson attacking. Johnson trying to drive, puts his head down. Is that McKissick? That's five. McKissick's out. Well, that's bad news, the Roser. All those fouls in the first half we were talking about coming back here and really Starting to hurt UMKC here in this overtime period. <laughs> Havoc's letting him know he needs to go to the bench and take a seat. So McKissick's out. Alex out. McKissick, their leading scorer coming in. Now Williams and Hardinet are the next two up, each with four personal fouls. Yeah, the other side of that is the Lopes don't have anybody with four fouls out there on the floor right now. They're in pretty good shape. Yeah, Labor's the only one out there with three. Tied up at 64. So Carlos Johnson, you... He was stuck on 10 points for a long time in this game, and he has really turned it up here down the stretch now, looking for a 16th point. Two big buckets. The Lopes regain the lead by one. Approaching three minutes to go in overtime. That's Williams. One, two, two press has really disrupted the offensive flow for the Roots. Harden that. Iron down Blackshear. Moves left. Looking inside, nothing there. Quickly, look out. Whitfield doesn't go. Hard neck. Comes back up top. Six on the shot clock. Giles puts it up. Off the front of the rim. Well, that looked good the whole way. Yeah, yeah. It was similar to a shot we saw early in the first half. It just came up short. Blackshear now records his 10th rebound, so he's got a double-double with 14 and 10. Johnson, back out to Blackshear. A lot of time. Ten on the shot clock. Step back. Three. Oh, off the mark. Big rebound. Brown. Brown got the board, but it was Labor yep. inside yep. with the muscle squirting that ball some 30 feet out away from the basket for Brown to corral it. Ten on the shot clock. Brown all the way to Blackshear. Beyond the arc for three. Good! Why not? Bam! I'll tell you what, that was a nice job there, recognizing they were forcing the action inside with Labor, and then they left Blackshear alone, didn't think he was going to be able to deliver the big punch from the outside. Ruse drives, swatted away! 
I'm not even sure what happened there, but I know a bunch of black shirts converged on the basketball, caused that ball to get squatted out of there. Blackshear with his second double-double this year. The other one at San Diego State. Blackshear steps back. Looking to drive, kick back out. Brown beyond the arc. Eight, seven on the shot clock. They're chewing it up. Six, five. Brown better do something. Lays up the three. Oh, Laver tried to reach up over the top. Here come the Roos. A minute left to go in overtime. Four-point lead by GCU. Hartnett to his right. Near side, bounce pass into White. Inching his way in, trying to get by Laver. Oh, he, oh, he got fouled. But Laver did such a nice job on that initial move, but the up and under got him out of position and was got just enough body to get the fourth personal foul on Laver. So he did just that move right there, and then the bump with the belly, trying to recover, and caused the foul. Got to get this rebound, should it come off. Loose ball, Labor. Oh. Didn't react to it. I don't know what he was thinking. I think they're, they're, they're mentally tired, they're physically tired, oh, but that's a good time out there by Coach Marley. Give his chance, team a, uh, a breather here. This is a huge offensive possession, obviously. Two-point GCU lead. Let's look at this crucial Blackshear three. I go back it one more time. Brown sees this. Nobody within 12 feet of Blackshear just fires a strike right to his chest, and Blackshear just snatches that ball and calmly knocks down the three. I like the way he holds that gooseneck up there, too. And then look at this one more time here. Just two guys come down here. Jenkins, who was beat on the play initially, comes back from behind, sticking with it and swats it away because he got just enough help from his buddy Labor to make the uh, shot have to go a little bit longer and allow Jenkins to get back into the play is what I'm trying to say. And he got the block. So good team defense on that one. It was GCU Victoria 69-66 at KC on January 19th. They lead it 68-66 with 45 seconds left to go in overtime. Free throw differential, KC 3 of 8, GCU 28 of 36. That last team, like this team's play, wasn't the score 69-66, so they're doing about what they normally do and play the game in the highest 60s. And interesting to see without Alec out there, if they go into labor, will they, the, will the Roos double team down low and leave a man open on the perimeter? Here we go. Jenkins. Finds Johnson, was eyeing Blackshear. Back to Brown, now they get it to Blackshear. Chewing it up, chewing up the clock. Brown looks inside the labor. Labor on by White. Labor putting that left shoulder in. Kick back out to Brown. Up for three. Money! Bam, bam, baby! A nice job. Taking the ball into Labor, and he finds Brown wide open on the outside. White puts up the three. Off the mark. And Brown is fouled. No, I think it's jump Bowman. ball, but the Lopes have the arrow. Really? This one more time. Labor. Does a nice job not forcing the action, sees his teammate moving into his field of vision and gives a great pass to Brown. And I don't know who cleared out a couple <laughs> ruse, but did a nice job clearing out a little extra space, allowing Brown an extra second to knock it down. So Carlos Johnson, he won't get an assist on the play, but it certainly was a huge play. Into Brown. Into Johnson. Oh no. And another jump ball. Oh, that's gonna and be a turnover. Be KC. Oh, Ten seconds to go, and KC gets the ball back. They're not able to break the press. Johnson gets tied up. Somehow the ball seemed like it got stuck between his knees. They went down there and jumped on it. Now it's tied up. So a five-point GCU look lead, and the Ruse got the ball back. Both teams huddle up again. 10.2 seconds remain. 
But what the Lopes need to realize is they got a five-point lead. Yeah. Only thing they don't want to do on this play, they don't care if they don't give up a three, they don't give up a two, but they cannot foul and stop that clock. Ruse are out of timeout. All right, well, let them, if they score the basketball, get yourselves in position, run your base, your out of bounds play, make sure you get the ball into the hands of your better free throw shooters and salt this game away from the free throw line. Just don't foul. I don't care if it's a three or two if I'm up five with 10 to play. Try not to give up a lay. Not a lot of time comes up the clock to allow them to drive the ball inside. And rebound the miss. A lot of times guys watch that shot in the air and they forget, oh, if it comes off, I got to go get that ball. And they've perfected these inbounds. KC. Green up Whitfield. Back out, Giles throws up the three. Push back, loose ball. Up for Brown. The Lumps are going to go on and win it. 71 66. Woo! Well, a nice job coming from behind, never splintering when things were looking bad. They stayed together and they pulled this one out of the fire, and it will feel even sweeter tonight as they did it as a team. So the Lopes improved to six and four in the conference with a 71-66 victory, while the Ruse dropped to four and seven in the WAC. As we send it down courtside, Kate Longworth with Javon Blasio. And Dan Marley, our again coach on Pressure situation down the stretch. How did you feel your team handled the situation and responded with the bench? Well, not bad for having a freshman point guard. Made a big shot. I thought our guys battled through. Uh, they got a lot of heart. They keep working at it, and they're unbelievable. I love them. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. And that turns it over to you. What was really your success tonight? Uh, I was just feeling it. Uh, I felt like we, we needed somebody to start off strong, and I was the one, and it was going to get everybody going. So that's what I tried to do. Tonight's victory, a big one for you guys, seeing Kansas City for a second time. And obviously, you can control your own fate heading into that WAC tournament if you take care of business. How important was tonight's victory? Uh, it was important. It was to show guys that we can win two games. We're not just a team that has spurts. Uh, we could do it. So that's what we tried to show out tonight. You're composed in this interview. You seem not rattled at all on the court. We know you're a freshman, but I mean, really, you've just come into your own with the Lopes. What's this season been like for you so far? Uh, it's been a real learning experience. Uh, I try to take everything slow and learn as much as I can. I'm only a freshman. I have plenty more years, so I just want to learn as much as I can and be the best I can. All right, thank you so much, Devon Blackshear Jr. The future is bright for the Lopes. Go celebrate with your team. And a freshman leading the way tonight, and really he's helped his team all season long. Future bright for the Lopes, but tonight it's shot and pig here at GC Arena as they get the victory over the Ruse of Kansas City. 71-66 the final. We'll be right back to wrap things up here from GC Arena. To Sanderson Ford. Straight up offers like these. Now through President's Day, escape to a D-Banks game and a new escape for only $18.9. Lease one for only $2.59 a month. Save ten dollars on all 2019 F-150 Super Cruise. Get two Arizona Diamondback tickets just for coming in. Plus, they support local sports. And donate generously to local charities. If it's important to you to do business with someone who supports our community, choose Sanderson Ford. Straight up. Bossy, Bossy, just looking at my kids like a Bossy. Put a bang, 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 bang. If I win a big man, I get to the to the beast of London and mid and edges. Is it? Rock a show, stop a beat, get it crunk and wired. Wave your hands, scream loud. Everybody here, everybody here, everybody here, get it out of control. Isaiah Brown with a huge three-point shot. Three of his six points. Yeah, the bench didn't do much in that first half, but they were huge in the second half. Jenkins and Brown, and Brown with that big, big shot right there to ice the game. 71-66, <laughs> the final in overtime.
Barry Butel, Scott Williams back with you after this one. Uh, it, it was a nail biter down to the finish. Carlos Johnson had a shot there right near the buzzer to uh, end it in regulation. And this was probably as close to, in a very, very tight Western Athletic Conference to a must win uh, victory. I mean, they really needed it on their home court in this victory. They really did. They hadn't been playing all that great on uh, their home floor. They went on the road and got a couple good wins in the Western Athletic Conference on the road, but they needed to defend their home turf for these two basketball games. And I say that because you got Chicago State coming in after this. So this one's going to give you a little momentum. Yeah. You will you know, have a light, light practice tomorrow, get some shots up, watch some tape, and then get ready for Chicago State on Saturday. Time now for our Canyon State Credit Union player of the game. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. Who else? Oh, he was kid was absolutely electric tonight. He mentioned it. he wanted some, someone to get off to a fast start. And tonight it was him. Those buckets inside the three-point play gave the Lopes the lead at 3-2, which they held most of the, the half, and that really got him going. I, but he, the kid plays with a moxie that's beyond his years, that's for sure, and an uh, understanding of how the game's supposed to be played for himself and for his teammates. And it, it really has shown up here in the Western Athletic Conference because the Lopes are playing their best basketball of the season at the right time. Now, this is second time through the conference. Teams know what you're going to do, and. That defensive play right there when the team was down by two was about as big a play as I've seen a freshman make since Michael Jordan hit a shot down in New Orleans to win a world, to win a national championship. So he knew what his team needed tonight, and he provided it. Second double-double of the season for Blackshear. Uh, the other one coming at San Diego State. We revisit the Sanderson Ford three keys. Yeah, I, I think they did a decent job getting back in transition. It was the, the execution. Uh, in the half court that they could not stop. It was the, the ruse that were going inside, time and tap at the end, deep into that defense of the of the um, the Lopes for too many points in the paint. And then boys to men, we talked about the young freshman having to stuff up. Well, uh, Blackshear certainly did that tonight. Alessandro Labor, another guy that stepped up. Well, I like Labor because the guy is patient. He realizes he can't bring the ball up the floor. He's got to wait till he gets opportunities for his guards to feed him, or he goes and gets it on the offensive glass. And then he uses a good series of footwork and then pick and pop, pick and rolls, and it's just been very efficient with the basketball. He got a great job in the first half, just putting so much pressure on that loose defense. They just kept piling up the piling up the fouls, and it paid off because a lot of those guys that he was going to have to face in the overtime were sitting on the bench. Yeah, 18 points, eight rebounds for Labor. Let's uh, send it downstairs as uh, we'll get a couple of comments from the head coach, Dan Marley. Just really proud of the guys. Very, obviously, gritty win. Uh, gritty win. First half, It was uh, they were very physical with us. We didn't handle it very well. Um, I told the guys it was going to be a, a grinded out game and probably all will be from here on out. So. I thought in the second half they did a much better job of being physical, taking the punishment, um, protecting the ball a little bit better. We still had some turnovers down the stretch, but uh, once again made some really key baskets. Uh, you know, Doobie, uh, Isaiah, Javon, um, all of them. So I'm just really proud of, of, of how they played and grinded it out. And that's what I was just saying all game. It's going to be a grind out game. And uh, not bad for a freshman point guard to play 41 minutes have 12 rebounds, 17 points, and five assists. So proud of him. I'm proud of everybody. That was a that was a gut. We knew this was going to be a gutty win or a gutty performance. Uh, that team is really well coached. He does an unbelievable job. They play really, really hard, and they're very physical. And uh, that was a good test for us, and we battled back. So uh, couldn't be happier. Is that more of a, a mental toughness, man, or a physical toughness? Man? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, we knew they were going to be physical, and we didn't handle it well in the first half, uh, but we did in the second half. And uh, down the stretch, it was mental. I mean, there was a, a point there, I don't know, it was like two or two and a half minutes left where it wasn't looking good. And we got some key stops, and we made some big baskets. Uh, you know, and then it takes a lot when you miss a point blank layup at the end of regulation to win the game, uh, to be able to bounce back in overtime and to win it. And that's what we did. Uh, Carlos has been strong all year. And uh, as I said, I was, it was going to be a grinded out game and our guys grinded it out. We've been tough all year. It hasn't always fallen our way, but we play hard. Well, I mean, he's going to get better. I mean, I, I can't wait. Well, 
when he gets better, you know, next year or whatever, he's going to be a, he's he's already a really good player. Uh, he's a freshman. He's a freshman that's been thrown into a college game, playing 36 minutes a game and learning on the fly. Uh, he hasn't even tapped his potential yet. Um, he works. He learns. He listens. Um, yeah, he's going to be a great one. So it doesn't, doesn't surprise me. I mean, it surprised me he was playing as well as a freshman. Uh, he's going to continue to get better. There's no doubt about that. It's going to be interesting to see Javon Blackshear develop. Yeah, the upcoming schedule against Chicago State here Saturday night. Kate will have the pregame show at 5.30. Then it's off on the road to Seattle, Utah Valley, and then back here on the 27th against New Mexico State and UTRGV. We hope that you join us tomorrow from Brazzle Field at GCU Ballpark, 5.30. Kate will have the pregame show. It's the Oklahoma State Cowboys, 16th ranked in the nation against the GCU Lopes. It'll all come your way tomorrow from Brazzle Field. But until then, with a 71-66 overtime victory, the Lopes are victorious. For the likes of Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Bichel, and I would like to wish you a wonderful evening.